Hello and welcome to day five of the IFSC World Championships in Bern, Switzerland. Last night it was the men's turn to get some medals and today it's the women. My name is Matt Groom and I'm joined by Shauna Coxie once again in the commentary box. Shauna, good morning and how are you today? Hi Matt, I am very well, thank you. I am incredibly excited about this event and you know, the route setters, the atmosphere, everything just was incredible yesterday. So. Hopefully we get a repeat today. Absolutely, yeah. And you can go back and watch all the highlights on our YouTube channel with the World Climbing Club and, of course, watch the live broadcast. I mean, we won't give away too many spoilers if you're watching this this morning, but it was a very special competition, as Shauna said. Now, we've got 20 athletes competing for just six final places. This is the list of names. Molly Thompson-Smith will be out first as she qualified in last position. And Brooke Rabatou, down at the bottom of the leaderboard, will climb last as she qualified in first. And Shauna, you were saying some big names missing from this list. It's quite wide open. It really is. And I think there was a lot of upset in the qualification, a lot of surprises. You know, we've seen athletes making it here that haven't made a semi-finals yet this season. And then athletes who've been winning World Cups, making finals, not making it to semi-finals. So, yeah, what a crazy lineup we've got here. Um, but I can't wait to see all of the athletes. A really great different range of styles from these athletes and the boulders as well they are going to test them they look hard to me they do look hard a physical set i mean you kept saying the word biceps a lot because it's <laughs> so thuggy especially the first two and in fact we're looking at the wall now and we're starting on the right hand side uh the yellow and black one in the middle that's boulder one and then we go mm -hmm. right into boulder two so a powerful start for the women Really powerful start. Two boulders that are going to require a lot of upper body strength, a lot of bra, I would say. You know, they're going to have to really get their fight on. Um, quite relentless in the movements. They don't really let up either of the boulders. You won't, I don't think we'll see people hanging around and chilling on these climbs. They're going to have to keep fighting the whole way through. Absolutely. Well, that is women's number one there. You start on the right, you launch to the left, you finish at the top. And the rules for Boulder are pretty simple. You start where it says start with the green tags, one limb per tag. You make way across the boulder towards the zone hold, which is a word zone written in the circle with a pink line to it. You have to use that hold. That's the first scoring opportunity. And from there, you have to get to the top of the wall, match the final hold in control. And then you get the top for the boulder. There are some other little rules along the way, but we'll explain them as we get to them. And 65 degrees overhanging, 60 degrees overhanging there in the middle of the wall. <laughs> Very thuggy section for sure. Yeah, and some really big, bad holds on there. You know, these black volumes that you can see, you can see the chalk, but that doesn't mean that they're in cut. It doesn't mean that they're really big juggy holds. They're very rounded. It's going to be incredibly physical on that section of wall. You're going to have to be squeezing super hard, using heels, like heels and beef, I would say. <laughs> nice. I like this. We've got all the thuggy words going on. We've got <laughs> beef, we've got ah, oh, we've got everything. But that boulder there is a little more delicate, a slab with some complicated foot movements in it. Yeah, so speaking to the setters, it seems like it's a slow start, slightly fast in the middle into a slow finish. Um, they don't think someone will go slow the whole way across, but they did say it might be possible. So open to kind of interpretation to the climbers on what works best for them. And I think we'll see people trying a few different options there because there are so many volumes on that boulder. You've got kind of a variety of choice to decide which sequence of foot placements you do. Um, yeah, I think that almost makes it harder though. Harder to see what is going to be the right way for you. Yeah, it's a complicated one to read. And do remember the athletes do not see these boulders before they climb. So they have to walk out onto the mats, look at it for the first time and figure it all out within a time limit. It's one of the reasons why it's so hard. Now our audience seems to be growing day by day, I swear. We're having more and more people in here. Isn't it just, I just, just thinking to myself how the atmosphere already feels a little bit like finals last night. You know, it was electric in here and I think the people want to see another good show. The athletes want to give them that, so let's hope they can do that. Absolutely. Well, Molly Thompson-Smith is out on the mats. And remember, Molly had a horrible ankle injury a couple of months ago. She's coming back 
I remember her talking to her in Salt Lake, and she was just like, look, Boulder is, is not necessarily my strength right now because it hurts sometimes when I fall, but she's in a semi-final and climbing so well. In her words, she said she felt like she was making up numbers at World Cups this year. So to see her in a semi-final, totally owning it in qualification, smashing the slab, like in climbing so smoothly, a really ankle intensive slab and looking so strong here. Yeah, bumping into that zone hole. So she's got points on the board. Molly is an incredibly strong, powerful athlete. I think she'll really enjoy this body. You can see her totally owning these moves, being so solid throughout the sections where the root setters did think you'd have to go much more dynamically, but not for Molly. No, Molly is cruising here. It's going to be a flash of Boulder 1 for her if she can make this match, which she does. What a start. She is going to be so happy with that. I think we'll see a big smile on her face. We do. That is awesome for Molly Thompson-Smith. And in terms of the Boulder and lead competition uh, later on in the week, she's doing such a good job. Performed well in lead as well. Really well in lead. She was looking smooth and controlled on the lead routes. And just as she did there. I went out and looked at these boulders and I thought, mm, Molly's going to enjoy these first two for sure. And after her performance in qualification, you know, like she was absolutely owning it on the slab. That's what got her into the semi-finals here. Her first ever semi-finals at a boulder event, um, a world boulder event. So, yeah, what a way to start that. Yeah, walks out of the back. It's a quick flash and she'll leave with lots of confidence from that. And if you're watching and thinking, well, maybe the boulder's too easy, perhaps, however, these athletes are so, so good, and you can never count anyone out or in, even if they climb first. Interesting here, Molly seems to have some tape on her fingertips, which means she's either got thin skin or she's gone through her pads. Um, so hopefully that doesn't slow her down. It doesn't seem to be. She might also be pre-taping ahead of, like, more rounds to come. Um, but... Yeah, worth keeping an eye on that, isn't it? It's on, on the left hand and, and right hand mm -hmm. as well. So she... She had a rest day yesterday, so hopefully her skin's feeling good. It doesn't seem to be holding her back in the slightest. Yeah, you can see the tape there. And then good footwork in order to get established through that zone hold. What's interesting watching Molly on this climb is this is her bag. This is what she is absolutely best at. She's so, so insanely strong. When I say biceps, look how strong she is. You know, I think she's lulled us into a false sense of security in making that climb look so easy i think we're not going to see everybody making it look like that um, the root setters said that the first move was dynamic that the second move was dynamic that the move to the yellow hold was dynamic um not for molly no she, she was really cruising there and 35 degrees overhanging as well so do remember that sometimes on the screen it's quite hard to get the angles but uh just bear that in mind so we have a short break here, a minute and a half till the next athlete. And by the middle of this competition, we'll have four athletes climbing and then things calm down at the end. When we went and looked at this boulder, we both were saying how bad those holds looked. Molly is making them look like jugs. She's making them look absolutely huge. Uh, they're really not. They're quite sloping. They've got some subtle edges to them. The last hold, the root setters were expecting uh, the heel that Molly did on the black left um, long hold, but they thought that the shorter athletes, which Molly is one of them, would have to bump their right foot up onto the yellow volume, which would make it incredibly insecure. Molly's tension, however, meant that she didn't need to do that. She was so, so secure through this movement here. Coming into that match, you can see how solid she looks through the hand, incredibly strong fingers. Um, it's so cool to see her looking so comfortable and happy on the mat, especially after such a major injury last summer. Um, yeah, and She's yeah. not holding her back in the slightest. She's only getting stronger and stronger. Yeah, well, as you said, major injury. I was watching as she landed on those mats because it is. For, and she said to me, "It's you know, it's easier her being on a lead rope, obviously, because you don't necessarily have that impact." Mm -hmm. So she stayed away from boulder training for a bit, and of course that does affect your season later on. So although she, you know, was cruising on a lead walk, boulder's taken her a little bit longer to come back from. Definitely, and it is very different to train for. Um, and also the headspace you need to be in, you know, with falling and being ready for that. Um, I think we've seen Molly struggle with that a little bit this season with, if you look at her results in the World Cups, and she just seems to have switched into a different gear here, found her flow. She's looking confident. Um, and yeah, I think she'll really like the next boulder too, but I'm also excited to see our next athlete. Yeah, Oceana McKenzie is about to come out onto the mats. Australia, if you're watching, 
please start screaming at your TV screens. I know the support she has back at home. And to be fair, in Europe, a really popular and strong member of this circuit. I actually climbed with Oceana Osh um, in her first ever final, and it was clear then that she was going to go on to do big things. So much talent at such a young age. Yeah, Osh is her preferred name, if you're wondering. So although it's Oceana on screen, we will call her Osh, because that's what she would like. So the you can see here, she's much taller. Yeah, makes that bump and then stretches the left foot out. Let's watch this section here. So much tension required. She unlocks the toe, holds the swing. She looks like she's absolutely cruising. And Cruzmo gets that heel locked in. Going to take her time to stay steady into the match. And looking happy with that. Yeah, less than a minute there to flash that boulder. And yeah, you're right with the uh, standing on the zone hold. So some of our shorter athletes might have to stand perhaps up on the volume instead of what she did, which was stand on that zone. Yeah, so that's what was expected from the root setters and from when we stood underneath it, it looked that, like that might be needed. However, these athletes are clearly maybe a bit stronger than, than any of us um, anticipated. You know, they, our first two athletes have come out, made really light work of that boulder. Um, it's hard to say whether that's going to be the case for the athletes coming out later um, because this order doesn't mean that it's in the order of ability. You know, they qualified in this, they're coming out in reverse order, but whether these boulders suit different athletes and how they climb is yet to be seen. Yeah, you're totally right because out of these 20 names, I'm, I'm looking down the list. I mean, we've got past champions there, we've got gold medalists, and, and the order is all mixed up. I mean, Yanya Garnbrecht down at the bottom, obviously uh, having a very good round, but Brooke Rabatou jumping above her, and Celia Avazu coming in later as well. That's going to be exciting to watch. Yeah, so with the qualification, it happens in two groups. So someone actually sent me a message asking, why is Brooke climbing last? Like, why is she um, ranked above Yanya when she had fewer tops? And that's because she was in a different qualification group. Um, so top 10 from each of the two qualification groups. Are being are seen on the mats here today, and um, so that's why Brooke was ahead of Yanya because she was in a different group. There we go. And, and I'm having a lot of questions uh, about the Olympic process at this event, uh, and I know you're totally 100% up on this. So can you <laughs> explain the ticket process at the World Champs? How do our athletes get into the Olympics here? So there'll be 10 spots awarded at this event. There'll be four for speed. So the top two men and the top two women in speed in the Speed World Championships will get their Olympic tickets. And then we have lead and boulder. So that will take place after the boulder, which is its own, own event, and the lead, which is its own event. Um, and then the results will be calculated to see who is ranked in the top 20 of the boulder and lead. So their results are both put together and then we'll get the top 20. They'll go through and compete in boulder and lead together. Um, and then top eight go through to the finals. So we have the boulder and lead as the qualification process and then the finals and then top three. So our podium in boulder and lead will get their Olympic ticket. I cannot wait for that podium. It's going to be so, so I'll get emotional. I'll slicker explaining that as we no, go No, that, that makes perfect sense. It's better than I could have done it. Mm -hmm. And of course, Shauna, you qualified for the Olympics at, at the World Championships. Like, t for you, that moment when you were up there getting that ticket, what, what was that like? So it was, I, I use the word surreal all the time, and it was the most surreal experience. In my head, I had my pathway to the Olympics kind of planned out. I expected to be going forward into the next qualification process, which we'll see for the athletes coming later in the year and into next year. Um, I had no idea that I was going to qualify at the World Championships. I had no, no clue that I could win a medal in Boulder and win a medal in the combined. Um, so I just was in disbelief most of the time, but... Events like this create a different kind of buzz. They just heighten the emotion so much for the, for the athletes, for the teams, for the coaches, the root setters, everyone involved. It means something different when there's Olympic spots on the line. Um, so yeah, to, to just be here and be experiencing that is incredible for the athletes, I'm sure, but it's so nice to be here on the other side of it as well. Having been through it, I still get that same like tingle in my tummy. Like I still get super nervous. Um, you know, watching Molly climb here, <laughs> knowing Molly well from back home. It's, yeah, it's, it's a privilege to be here, but was, 
it's, I think it's harder to watch than it is to climb, in all honesty. Well, it was so <laughs> emotional as well. I mean, last night, we won't give it away for anyone worrying, but it was a very emotional final. There was tears all around the arena. So do go back and watch that. Oh, I cried. You did, yeah. You were <laughs> crying. You were feeling it. And oh, it, was, it was full on. Right, Francisca Stella comes on from Austria. And then Molly is back on the mat on Boulder 2. And this is where things start to ramp up a bit in intensity here in our semi-final. So two athletes together. And remember, there'll be four very soon on the mats. Molly there having a look at boulder number two. And again, it's a boulder that should really suit her style. Yeah, I expect she's going to really enjoy this one. Franziska, having had really good seasons previously, but not found her flow this year, I don't believe she's made a semi-final this year. So to finish on a high with boulder, you know, there's no more boulder comps this year. Um, I think she's going to be really pleased to be out there and wanting to give it her all and showcase what she's got, having not been able to do that yet this year. Well, look at this, cruising through Boulder 1. I think we're beginning to realise that Boulder 1 is pretty flashable, very climbable, and therefore will be important for the athletes to do. Interestingly, I think now that people are flashing that, it's going to build the pressure and maybe change how athletes approach it. Yeah, they'll be waiting back in ISO, knowing what's happened. Molly, meanwhile, is in the zone. She's been awarded it. She is fighting hard here. And yeah, there's a few different ways potentially through this section. I think there's an infinite number of ways through this section. You've got a number of holds, and I think we're going to see climbers getting into very different positions, using heels, using toe hooks, um, just trying to maneuver their bodies through all these kind of big volumes that are underneath the roof. Um, the zone hold itself, it has a little jib, so it has a screw on, on it, it's yellow, we'll get a look at that. Um, but you want to hit the bottom of it, so the purple part, and it's very slopey, it doesn't give you much, it's going to be a lot of tension and body position required to maneuver around that hold, as opposed to just pulling through it. There we go, so that's what Molly has ahead of her, and she's having a look at the clock and the boulder. Trying to figure the sequence out. Sitting in the top spot at the moment because she's uh, the first athlete out. But remember, we've got 20 athletes and we're looking for just six finalists. So it is a savage cut here. In semi-finals is often the hardest round of the competition. It's hard boulders. It, they want to split the field. And in order to do that, it's got to be boulders that are droppable. You know, we'll see a lot of falls here, um, a lot of fight, a lot of try hard. Molly taking a deep, deep breath as she shakes those arms out. Two and a half minutes on the clock. This one's so physical, which is why we're seeing Molly resting so long, which is important to notice. On the boulders where it's more technical and less physical, athletes tend not to rest as long. Right, so Molly's had her rest. She's underway. Bicycle at the start into mm -hmm. the crimp and then reaching all the way deep into the sloper for the best part of that hold. Looking at her skin there, so potentially she does have um, a split pad, which would mean is when you're, she might have worn through the pad or split it um, in the qualification round. She was doing some good fighting on the wall in qualification. Um, so she was looking down the tapes there because you're not allowed to climb if you're bleeding. So she will need to have tape on, but she hasn't retaped. So luckily she doesn't need to do that on the map, but you can definitely tell on the last go, she looked a little fatigued already. This round, you can see here, the first one is incredibly physical. Big smile there as she reaches, Francisco reaches the last hold. Yeah, there is a, you were saying during the observation, there's a little bit of a lip on that final hold. It's not quite as bad as it looks there. But a big move, as you say, and you can just see those taped tips in that shot. All right, so Molly has a look at the clock. She's timed it to about the minute mark before she pulls on, and you'd think this would be one of her last goes on this boulder. It's clearly, as you said, very, very physical. So she's hitting this crimp here. It's a really positive crimp. Um, I don't think we'll see athletes struggling with that. But the hold she's got now, this black hold, you want to hit right at the very back where there's a little bit of positivity, but it's not great. The right hand she's got is all sloping. She's just compressing here. She'll reach over with the left hand. Not a lot on that hold at all, incredibly slopey. You can see here I was saying she wants to try and do something with her hips, move around, try and maneuver her body so she can get up higher onto this hold so she can reach the little yellow jib. She looked like she was trying to move her feet to the right here. 
What I expect we'll see in athletes who are successful is they'll get their right heel super high up on the highest black hold that we can see, and then they'll maneuver their hips up and around the lip, which will then change where their body position is, where their weight sits, so that they can get higher up into that zone hold. So no send for Molly, but yeah, real close from her. Real close from her, good words, Matt, there. But <laughs> it's early in the morning here. I'm waking <laughs> up to this. Also great that she got the zone. Yeah, so she's uh, a top and a zone in. Mm -hmm. And that, as you said, big difference later on. And there is our crowd. And the, uh, check out the, uh, the volunteers on the top right of your screen. They have a section of words that they spell <laughs> out the various different athletes' names, which has I been love lovely. That. Martina Bereskova from, uh, is coming on from Slovakia. Martina is 16 years old. This is her first world championship. Did she not? No, no, no. I was, I was oh, sorry. I was shaking, shaking my head my in head disbelief. Head you know, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've like, got... I think she is. No, she definitely is. Yeah, we've got so many... Like... She has done one World Cup this year, finished 13th, which is absolutely incredible. So it's her first year on the season, just waltzing straight into semi-finals. Yeah, really good to see these young athletes. I mean, we had Serato in the finals yesterday. He's just 16. Annie Sanders later on is 15. Crazy how young some of these climbers are. Cruising through the first moves. You can just see there how wide that is, how much strength is required to hold that position. You saw her hand flick into the right hand hold. Again, another wide move. <sighs> Miss that powerful cross through. And yeah, sometimes a bit deceptive, the first couple of athletes cruising through that boulder, but it's definitely harder than it looks. And definitely going to be adding the pressure on, you know. You can feel when someone tops, and if they come back to ice so quickly, you see that it's obviously been a fast top. Um, you hear the crowd, you can hear the atmosphere going. You won't, the athletes won't know the results, they won't have seen, but they'll be feeling what's going on. So it's just going to be adding that pressure. You know, the first athletes out have the luxury of no pressure, no expectation, not knowing what's been happening before them because there haven't been any athletes. Um, but yeah, it changes things a little bit as we get get further down the field. Absolutely. Well, Martina is sitting, looking up. Osh talks to herself. And Osh always seems to talk to herself. She has this conversation running through her <laughs> head on the mat. It's great to see. Just shaking out that left hand there. With these two boulders, because they are so powerful, we will see the athletes resting. I expect that will be different on the next two. This really feels like a semi-finals of two halves. We've got the two powerful boulders, and then we've got, I won't, I won't spoil it actually, we've got some very different boulders coming next. Um, you can probably see them just on the left of the screen. Uh, I think the setters have done well, again, to showcase a, a range of different styles so that athletes can best kind of showcase their skills. Yeah, I know she's gonna have to Unleash some body tension here with this move. That right foot there was on a jib on the purple start hold. So you've seen here, she's not yet got the zone. She's struggling on this powerful section. It's incredibly steep, incredibly powerful. They are squeezing between the two bad holds. We're getting a good look of that black hold that she's got in her left hand. The lip is right at the back of that there, but the right has absolutely nothing to kind of pull on with the fingers. It's all squeezing, so biceps engaging. Got a little look at the lip just here. See, so your fingers are kind of crimping slightly. She's open handed, but she's pulling on the lip. All right, so Martina crosses through and matches. The right foot up on the start hold, and then she starts to launch left and almost dropping that move, but holding the compression. Yeah, her right hand there is what saved her, it's what kept her on. Now, this is where she fell before, coming up to the yellow hold really creative there. She was doing a toe hook drop knee. Um, I mean, if I quite like myself, actually, it's quite useful for keeping your body in close to the wall. It's a, it's a hard move up to that yellow. You want to get nice and high because it's an undercut. She just didn't quite have the height there. Yeah, and she'll have one more go at that probably with a minute 14 to go. Osh again on the black volume is better this time. Much better. So she was a lot deeper on that hold this time. She's going to be fight in here to get to the zone. It's a bad hold. She's got a toe hook behind that, but she, unlike Molly, has her right foot up. So she managed to get that up a bit sooner than Molly did. Yeah, well, she just turns that zone hold into the better position yeah, by being on the left of it. Exactly. It changes how good it feels. First time really seeing this section of the route. 
And you, the first thing you said when you saw that hold is, oh, that's a bad hold. It is a bad hold, and I was curious to know whether the athletes would need to match in on either side of the hold and therefore do a really narrow compression and a transition with their shoulders to get to the other side and therefore reach the top, or whether they would come in and match underneath. Um, like, again, in the biceps as an undercut. The root setter said that they think we'll see the narrow compression as opposed to the, like, the undercut match. Um, both are possible, but the narrow compression is a lot easier. Yeah, it is. It must be such a narrow compression and just when I on say one hold. Easier, it's easier than the other way, but easy is not the right word to describe that move. <laughs> exactly. Well, Huge smile from Afra as she prepares to come out for yeah, that her shot first climb. is taken right back on the right of your screen behind that arch, and that she's being held by the ISO manager there. And you can see counting down as the beeps go. What a great shot. Our cameras are not really allowed back there, but we can sort of look at them through the arch and spot some emotions. <laughs> so Afra is on women's one. She looked ready. She looked confident. She looked happy. Yeah, Hannah Moyle, her teammate, a few people have been asking about her. She's sort of had not had the best competition by her standards. So Team Germany, but Team Germany with the men, a lot of athletes through yesterday. I think we'll see Franziska like this climb again. She's a powerful climber. She likes the steep, super strong on the compression. Just a little shallow there. You see her hand wasn't at the back of that big hold. She, the deeper she can get, the more squeeze she'll be able to put through those volumes and therefore engage a lot more through her shoulders, through her biceps. Yeah, that squeeze is what we mean by when we say compression. Afra on her flash go here. Looking solid. Ooh, commentator's curse. I know. We, I, I mean, honestly, it's, it's, uh, I should be bribed to not say things <laughs> to the <laughs> athletes. All right, Molly on the slab, and the first time we get to see this. This climb looks wild to me. I think I know what the athletes are going to do, but I also think that we're going to see them getting very creative. You can see there's a lot of holds here. Um, not all of them will be used. Um, some of them are blockers. Some of them are there to kind of create a, a kind of kinder angle. Um, and then Molly opting to try and stand right at the back of the volume here on the little lip, not looking very happy about having to stand on the slopes. It is a bit spooky standing on slopey volumes. Yeah, and, and the method for, for standing on things like that, we talk about heels being up and down a lot. Why would you want your heels to be down on something like that? So when you're going slow, the more surface area you can put through the volume and the more weight you can get through it, the better. Um, we often see climbers dropping their heels to get more weight through their foot, so more foot on the, on the volume as well. Um, but here, it's a fast move on the slab, so I think we might not see that so much unless athletes are trying to go slow. Yeah, you can see Molly maybe trying to creep, but look at Afra though on the main screen. Close to getting that yellow hold. Yeah, it looked like she was between two methods there maybe. She was almost trying to go slow and then like choosing to go faster. Molly trying to figure out a way around this. We were, we were feeling the volumes earlier to see if there was anything they could crimp and the root setter was smiling away because they've done their very best to ensure that doesn't happen. <laughs> they have, yeah, lots of blockers involved in that boulder. So Francisca is falling on the black slopers. Afra brushes the zone hold. Really interesting with this first one that we've seen the first set of athletes come out, flash it, very quick, not spend much time, and then as we've gone on, you know, it's it's slowed down a little bit. The pace has changed. Um, whether that's the athletes' preferred styles or the atmosphere building, the nerves building, kind of the added pressure, knowing that it was flashed earlier and or knowing that it was done quickly earlier in the round, It'd be interesting to see. Yeah, I'm always worried when I see very early flashes. I think, <laughs> oh my goodness, maybe they've undercooked it a little bit, but uh, things have been righted a little bit. So, Francisca Sterrett, Osh McKenzie, and Molly Thompson Smith with the sends. Molly trying to go fast there. So, almost too fast. She was way past the foothold that she's aiming for. So, we can see the zone hold there. We want to come one hold in and look at that hold there, has a little jib, a collection of different holds actually together to make the foothold more positive. 
we will see athletes trying to go quite quickly and catch that foothold. It's all going to be in where their hips end up, wanting the hips to end up straight above their foot and really precise foot placement. So we won't see heels dropped and really slow, I don't think, on this middle section. So she, she kind of went too fast and then this time was too slow. If we can get it in the middle, that'd be ideal. Um, but she's figuring it out. She's kind of trying different methods. Yeah. Up, back up high. Oh, this time Afra is in and she's going to match the top as well. Tries to get the heel in, brings the left hand through. And 30 seconds to go, she gets Boulder 1 done. That was cool to see. She made big adjustments. She knew her method. And when she got to that move this time, there was very little hesitation. Straight up high into the bicep undercut and her foot to the hold below so that she was able to really kind of make the most out of the undercut. Molly trying a method that I was um, stretching around on the mats earlier, wondering whether, wondering whether you could get your feet across from the start to the little jib that's out there. I, I do think we might see someone try that. It's going to be hard to get out of, um, and I was nervous I was going to rip my jeans when I was trying it earlier. Yeah, Sh Shauna was just, just explaining. Shauna was doing the splits on the mats when we were reading the boulders to see if the spread was possible. It was incredible. I did not attempt it. I'm, uh... <laughs> well, the root set said it was quite far, and I was like, mm, I mean, my feet go between those two, and... I've not stretched for a while. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. Watch that one. Right, Jenya Kazbakova is on for Ukraine on Boulder 1. Oh, she's on the slab on the left. Martina is on the very physical Boulder 2, which we've only seen two zones on so far. Jenya seems to have had some mixed results this season, but really be building and building. Um, her focus is on making the games. She's talked about that but had a, a tough round in lead and then a great round in Boulder. She's got a lot to give. You know, she fights really hard. She's incredible at a slab and has been working hard and getting stronger on the more powerful boulders as she's just shown us right here. Yeah, if she can get some early sense here, she's gonna enjoy the second half of this competition. So, but this is the crux move on this one. She's a really technical climber, as you can see. She's trying to make use of toe hook here. I think the way is going to be to just kind of brute force power through this next section. But you can see her eyes looking around. She's thinking. She did try to step her left foot through there, which we've not seen yet. Afra went dynamic, just similar to Jenya, but with the right foot stepping up. Yeah, so Jenya will reset. And oh, she's trying to figure this move out. Similar to Jenya, Osha, you can see her looking around, often on your first go, when it's not going to plan, when you look at the boulder, you see what to do, and you get on and it feels different, or the holds aren't quite right, or you didn't know what to do. You'll see people, you'll see the athletes, they'll be looking around, their head will be moving, their body will be moving a little bit, trying to find it comfortable. We saw that in the men yesterday. Um, and that's kind of the uncertainty playing in. It's hard to know when you're on the wall what choice to make. And then you'll see Osh and Jenya here um, calculating it all. It's all going on in their minds right now, figuring out what to do, what do they try when they get back on, what decisions do they make, and ultimately they want to be faster when they get on next time. I always think it's it's the loneliest round. They say, oh, look, that's the splits move. That's the one you did on the mats. <laughs> <laughs> it is a long way there. And the thing is, even if she hits it, she's then got to get out of the exactly. splits move. Exactly. You know, it's going to be a really spicy move to get out of. <laughs> But Osh is one of our taller climbers. She's currently holding on to a no texture hold here. There's nothing on it. Um, the, the edge is just super slippery. Whether she can get out of this or not, I don't know. Yeah, the foot is good. You can see there, it's all stacked up, but it's just moving on it. She's gonna have to spring left. And that middle volume sort of gets in the way as you bring that right leg through. Yeah, for sure it does. And you can see on the volumes, there's a slippery panel um, put on one side of the volume that's stopping you from using it, stopping from pulling on it or pushing on it. Um, so the root sets have been really clever here, actually, to force what they, they want the athletes to do, which seems to have worked because, oh, she's back to jumping. You know, she's not, she's not trying that again, so. But I'm glad she proved you right that it was possible. <laughs> I did think it was possible, but maybe not possible to get out of, so no. not so useful. Well, there are some gentlemen with binoculars. Uh, looks like they're staring directly at our cameras. I presume they're looking at the wall. Yeah, the crowd, the stadium here could hold 10,500 people. We're not at capacity, but there are lots here. 
And there's a party atmosphere outside the stadium as well. Lots of uh, things to do, climbing walls set up. There's an ice climbing thing and a tree structure. It's a great atmosphere here. And Genyuk goes again with a minute 12 to go. This move, oh, she's got a, high, a toe hook. Yeah, she tried this last time um, and then opted to change her mind. I, I don't think it'll work. I think she's going to need to stick with the more powerful methods. So when she gets into that undercut with the toe hook, she's incredibly extended. Um, and she's got no opposition because her toe's pulling her down and her hand is um, also upside down. Well, oh, she's wow. in. She jumps into that left foot, sinks down onto it to stop the movement. Now standing up, yeah, no texture where her left hand is, apart from on the blue volume, the yellow is slippy. Great to get our first look at the end of women's three here. Oh, she really making it work for her, doing it her own way on that start section and in cruise mode now. She is, but she's only got 14 seconds, so keep an eye on the time. Brings the right foot through, 10 seconds to go. This needs to happen now. Thumbs are going to play. She's got one hand, needs to match it in control. She does with three seconds to go. Awesome from her. Wow, that was incredible. I've got goosebumps. The crowd's <laughs> gone wild. Oh, she deserved that. She kept her composure right till the very end, and she needed to. It's a delicate finish. You can't rush it. She didn't. She wasn't flustered. Great climbing. Yeah, it really was. And there was no moment where she started to panic. You know, you get that thing on a slab sometimes, you see the athletes start to sort of have jerky movements. None of that from her then. Not at all, and really mature climbing. And a strong performance. All right, Francisca Stella has to take on the same slab. We know it's possible now. We know one way of doing it. <laughs> I love that she's, you can see she's an experienced climber. She's looking for all of the detail, trying to get as much as possible so that when she pulls on for this first attempt, she can feel what option might work best for her. Often it's hard to know what is going to be the best. She's currently stood with her left foot on a slippery panel with no texture. Yeah. Those are some sticky shoes she's got on. That, yeah, exactly. Fair play. Climbing shoe brands. <laughs> Chuck. Other brands are available, of course. And that left foot dancing around back and forth. I think that was Molly's legs you saw flip into screen there. In the women's four. She's trying this stretch method. She is trying the stretch method. And I, I do wonder if we'll see anyone make that work. Wow, Elna's rugby making live work of Boulder One. Yeah. Such a strong climber. She's great on the power moves. She got a top on women's three in qualification, one of the few tops on that boulder. Looking casual there. She's looking composed again. Yeah, great to have her back in comp. So good to see her out on the mat. Right, Francisca is again standing on that bad left foot. There is a slight line perhaps, but I mean, you can see the, the, the black rubber she's left behind in the middle. She is standing on that yellow surface. The, the yellow surface, yeah, with absolutely no texture. I don't think there's anything on there for her. So Afra sits down, Molly jumps right. We haven't really talked about boulder number four yet. We'll get it on screen soon. It's another physical boulder, but with a coordination style jump at the beginning. We also didn't mention Martina on boulder two. She was struggling in the in the steep section, didn't get the zone. Um, she's a young athlete, you know, 16 years old in her first um, world championships. It's really cool to see her getting that experience. But yeah, struggling on boulder two though. Franziska making the step across. Can she get out of it though? That's the question. Someone can make this work, I believe. <laughs> I She's looking around for anything to give us some help, though. I think you should grab your climbing shoes and show us how it's all done later <laughs> on. This is such a long stretch, isn't it? But look, she's getting her weight over on the left. Great oh, demonstration and flexibility here. It is, isn't it? You need strength out of this position. Can she pop that right foot up? She says, you can see here she's looking for something. She's looking for something for her hand. So she's obviously incredibly stretched. In order to get her weight across to the left, her hips are going to have to shift really drastically. Um, it doesn't seem like there's enough space to be able to make that work. Our first look at Boulder 4 here with Molly flying to the right. <laughs> yeah, falling out of our screenshot there. 
So Afro reaches up to the good bit of the left and slaps into the right. So fat, yeah, physical, that move. Yeah, and I don't know, Afro's not got the zone yet. So coming back to Molly earlier, who took the, took the zone, and we said how important that might be later on. The, this round is judged on number of tops and then number of zones next. So those zones, collecting them, even if you don't get the tops, is super important. Now, you talked a lot about hips yesterday mm -hmm. and body movement. I always movement. talk a lot about hips. <laughs> well, <laughs> the hips are so important in climbing. <laughs> yeah, and a swing like that with Molly, it's all about the hips, isn't it? And, and the body position on that. The hips and, and the momentum, so the way in which she is swinging, um, what direction she's swinging in. And I often, well, my coach used to say, imagine you're going up and over a fence. So when you swing, you're kind of going up and over the fence and then trying to land, huh. um, as opposed to going through the fence. Uh, which really helps on moves like this. That is the best description of a swing I've ever heard, honestly. Like, yeah, I've had I a lot of people tell me that. It's brilliant. I can't claim that one, so big thanks to Leah for that. Um, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> this, is, this is what you mean. So up and over the fence, down. See here, so she kind of went through the fence. So if she can kind of get her hips up, a big arc, so we're almost like an N shape. Um, we'll see her come up and then back down and land on the volume. If she's coming through that fence, her momentum keeps continuing. She doesn't stop. So we'll see her kind of pile really quite far to the right. That was a little better. So she managed to land just a bit short there. You can see she knows she, she felt that that was better. She was straight back on the wall. The clock's ticking down, but she wants one more go. She does. A full up and over the fence there. Oh, yes. she's in. All right, so she's got the zone. And now it needs to be real quick, oh. two seconds to go. And I tell you what, we, if there's any concern about that ankle, <laughs> I think that boulder's dispelled that <laughs> Look myth. at that smile. She is happy with that. I nearly started clapping then. I had to fight, fight to not start <laughs> clapping and cheering. That was really so fun to watch. Brilliant for Molly. A buzzer beater on the zone for her. Looked fun to climb too. She was happy with that one. Not normally her preferred style. Yeah, well, this was that moment. So Jumping she... back on with 15 seconds to go, I think it was. Crazy, isn't it? She started the swing, kicking off the wall, full commitment, hit the right hand, swung all the way around to stop her momentum on the wall. Great focus from her. You know, she was not letting go when she hit that hole. She knew she could hold it. Really good setup with the hips. So you can see her hips pivot. They are going perfectly in line with where she wants to go. And great strength in her hand when she hit that hold. I can't wait to see the photo of that moment. Do go check out the IFSC Instagram for uh, some special photos from our photographers. And Martina, well, she missed the zone on Boulder 2, so she needs something here. That was such quick work from her to figure that out, figure that method out. It looked perfect for her. If she can get that accuracy on her left foot hitting that purple jib, I think we'll see her get that pretty soon. Yulia Kruder, on the other hand, wow. She is having an amazing season. A Isn't she just? In a couple of years, she was kind of just off the mark somehow, and then this year she's come back with a bang. She seems season. to be improving every every year. You know, she keeps stepping it up. She keeps going away in the off seasons, working on like her weaknesses, and it feels like she's absolutely nailed it for this event. We've seen her in some semi-finals this year. She did miss semi-finals at the last event, so she, I'm sure she's be very happy to be out on those mats. All right, Martina creeps over to the left, palm on the volume and then falls. So here you want to get the height, so she's reaching over. I think she wants to stand up first, get all the way onto the left foot. That'll allow her then to take her left hand over. So you can see she was reaching, but she was, her hips were very low. Talking about hips again. <laughs> but her hips were very low, which kept her weight to the right of the foot, not allowing her to reach far enough to get that hold. Okay, well, she's figuring that one out. Oh, you're going to talk about hips again in a sec because she starts the swing. And she's so in easily. So very smooth. She knew exactly how to execute that movement then. So left foot up, and this is a huge move. And she stops on the black volume. One move to go now. The top's in sight, and this will do great things to her score. Well, that's three out of four boulders climbed. Good for Wow, Oche. really great work. You can see all of the coaches in the pits there clapping for her, not just the Australians. You know, everyone was impressed with that. Her ability to stay calm, stay composed, and really impressive to flash that paddle dyno. You know, this boulder four, you've got a big sideways jump, big swing into the zone hold, and then the next move is not a given by any means, but Osh made it look like a walk in the park. 
Yeah, the, you're right about the coaches. I saw green and I thought it was Team Australia for a sec. That's Killian Fisher who yeah, just <laughs> clapping for Team Austria. <laughs> exactly. That's good to see. All right, Jenya has two minutes to get this. I'm not sure if she's got a zone yet. But she's got her, uh, no, no zone yet. Just having to think about this. Martina has been piecing this boulder together bit by bit. Misses it this time. She's straight back on. A boulder like this, is it, is it sort of physically tiring something or, or can you have lots of attempts? Totally depends how you're climbing it. So as we saw other athletes trying to step across and then really power their way through the lower section, that's going to be tiring for sure. The way Martina's doing it, she's so delicate on her feet. She's kind of like dancing her way across. She's been super accurate, um, not wasting too much energy. You can see she's not resting very long. She's jumping back on. Um, it's all about being precise here. She, she missed the foot, kind of hit it with the wrong part of her foot, adjusted, no questions. She is so confident in her foot placements. Oh, she has to be. That left foot is a slanting jib, which is blocked. It, I mean, it, it's one of those moves that's terrifying to look at, you know, in terms of like slipping off it. She really needs to get her weight up now. Um, because she's reached across again, it's going to be a lot more awkward for her. Had she not reached over, it would have been a bit easier, but she's making it work. Now we've got the really tricky foot through. Yeah, she's got to be careful of the edge of the arete as well. Black tape, meaning you can't use it. Creeping up, she's sort of pinching that, makes the match. <laughs> and that, well, Big very smile. emotional for her. That means a lot. That was great to see. She was really strong through her left heel to be able to get the weight onto her feet, stay secure. You have to be super tight through your legs, through your adductors and your hips, squeezing that last volume, narrow compression with the feet, reaching up to the final hold, which there's not a lot there at all. You know, it's all it's all balanced. They kind of pinching that little little pig nose almost. You know, it's teeny tiny. There's not much there. <laughs> pig nose, that's brilliant. <laughs> I, Murray, waits in the wings as we watch Martina's last move. This is the pig nose. Love that. <laughs> right hand up, left hand matching. No pigs were harmed. Well, yeah, true. <laughs> Artificial pigs only. All right, so there is I, Mori. And she's one of those climbers who does prefer a more static sequence. She's been working on it, but these first sets of boulders are gonna be tough for her. Yeah, but she's so strong. You know, I think We'll see her cruising through the first one, it is what I would expect, and probably the second one too, in all honesty. Yeah, let's wait and see. Francisca misses the paddle, and this is Aymori, so yeah, looking very smooth. Drops the right foot down. Making it work her way. Exactly that. And she's not I wondered if she'd, we'd see a high foot here. Um, if anyone's going to make the high feet work, it's going to be I, and I expect similar on the next one. Crushed it from Aymori. She gets a competition off with a good start. And Elnaz on Boulder 2. So strong from Elnaz. A great display of power there. She's going to get that heel locked in and hopefully reach up to the zone. A really important zone to take in this round. It is. This position, going up with the left hands, where you've got to rotate your body through. And it, it looks hard that way. Yeah, it looks hard to figure out how to get the zone in a position that's actually going to be useful for the next move. So... Here we saw Elnaz with her left heel up. It's going to be really hard for her to move her heel around to the right. Um, Osh was in a much more front-on position um, with toe hooks in, which allowed her to get that heel up, which made her able to utilize the zone in a much better way. But coming back to Francisco on Boulder 4 here, she's dialing those moves. Yeah, from here we saw Osh do it first time. That left heel toe cam, it looks like. Clever to hold her into position. And that's a good top from Francisca. So lots of tops flying around, which puts pressure on the athletes coming later on. It looks like Francisca's really been training the competition style funky moves um, to be able to learn that paddle so quickly. You know, she missed it on her first go, made those adjustments and nailed the jump at the start on her next go as well. You, you know, keeping all of that together and piecing it together is what competition climbing is about. So it was a great display of executing that perfectly. Yeah, she did it well and got rewarded for it. Elnaz pointing out to the brushes exactly where she wants the holds cleaned. 
we go back to Afra on this slab. Oh, so close from Athra. I think she just lost it slightly not as accurate as she wants to be, so slightly further out from the wall than she needed to be there, and you could see her reaching with her hand to try and save it. Um, if she hits the feet perfectly and her hips are into the wall, we won't see her reaching. She'll be in a balanced position, and then she can kind of move on with the hands. And sometimes you look at rubber and chalk and it gives you hints. This bowl is just covered in rubber and chalk. It, it's confusing. It's really confusing, I think, as an athlete and a spectator because you don't know what to expect. Um, when Afra's going for that move, she's making different choices as her body falls in different ways. So if she loses it with her hip, then she's trying to catch it with her toe. If her shoulders lean back, she's trying to reach with her hand. Um, it's fascinating from a movement perspective to watch. Absolutely. Elnaz hasn't, she's had a lot of attempts on this, not resting too much, bumping that right hand around. And she goes with the right, or tries the right. Yeah, so if she can make that work, it'll set her up much better for the next move. You know, she's got the zone now. She's, she's ticked that box. She doesn't need to get the zone again. She can now play with different ideas to set her up better for the top section. That's a really good point, yeah. So she changed that up after that zone got awarded. Tactics. Ah, it's tactics. all about tactics. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why it's so good having you in this commentary box. You, I feel uh, like I'm giving all my comp secrets away, but I don't need them anymore, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, Afra goes again with 46 seconds. Hasn't quite nailed this sequence yet. She's tried lots of different things. And is committing to this hop, skip and a jump to try to land on the good foot. It's hard for Afra as well. She's looked so close. She's been so, so, so close to hitting this foot. She knows she can do it, but she's still not yet got the zone on this boulder. So I can see almost that she's getting flustered in frustration because it's, it feels like it's there for her, you know? She's definitely capable. Yeah, Trying to use the right toe. Yeah, she keeps pressing in on different parts of the wall to stop the momentum. 10 seconds on the clock. Oh, she's in, but she's gonna have to be quick. Three, two, one, she's gonna get timed out here. Oh, frustration. She looks so solid on that last go. It's one of the worst feelings where you have to drop. You know, you don't want to leave a round or you don't want to leave a boulder dropping off. You want to fight to the bitter end. So when you time out, it's, yeah, it's a hard pill to swallow. And, you know, she's got to go back into the isolation zone now, reset, refocus, let that boulder go because there's still one to go for her. Exactly. Lots of climbing to come. Jessie Piltz, we just saw a shot of her. And obviously an athlete that you've competed against for a long, long many time. Many years. Yeah, yeah. Jessie and I um, have done many competitions, including the Olympics together. Um, competed in finals alongside her many times. She's a really strong athlete with a great skill set. Has been go gone away and worked on her weaknesses. Been very open about that on social media, posting videos of competition style climbing, um, like the new school funky movements. Definitely wanting to be up there with the best in Boulder. She's definitely one of the best in lead. Um, oh, is that Martina? She's on Boulder 4. I think she flashed that. Top right of the screen. We heard the crowd react. She's certainly done it. Awesome from her. Looking forward to seeing that. That was very quick work. Less than a minute. Brilliant. Well, hopefully get a replay of that. Jessie is on the flash as well. As we'd expect, I think, on Boulder 1 for her. And Jenya is on Definitely the slab. Look, Jessie looking composed there. And there is Jenya. She tries to figure this out. As you said, slabs are something she really enjoys climbing. And in fact, the slab in the qualies is what got her to this stage. She was struggling. Now let's watch this for Martina. Really cool to see her so accurate on that movement. Really feisty through this move. You see her arms really straight, but it didn't matter. Her fingers are so strong that she was able to hold on. Did kick with the right. Made quick work of that. Looks very happy about it too, and the crowd loved it as well. Brilliant from her. What way to finish the competition. That bumps her up the scoreboard into second place. That means we can focus on the last athletes out here. Jenya pulls on once more. This chess game of a boulder problem. Feels like this is one you need to put the time into, figuring it out. If it doesn't feel quite right, trying different things. It's, it's a boulder of many attempts, I imagine, if you're not quite figuring out what 
what feels right for you. Um, Jenya looks really straight, like straight on as she's hitting those footholds. It almost like she needs to absorb the, the landing a little bit more. Not quite hitting the foot, hitting it a little bit too deep on her foot. She wants to hit it with her toe if she can, so she then can pivot around. We saw Martina hit it with the middle of her foot and then bounce straight into the toe, no hesitation. So we know that's possible too. Um, but Jenny not quite getting that accurate landing position that I've spoken about. Yeah, well, this is that land. Yeah, she's right in the middle of her foot then. And I suppose having that dual text could be quite helpful. You've got to slide down it into <laughs> position a little bit. Yeah, it's not going not gonna to give you any restriction here no. in that hole, no friction there. <laughs> and uh, Yulia is on women's two. Two minutes to go. Yulia Kruder, she fights so hard. It's great to see, you know, she's an, an athlete that you can see the emotion. You can see when she's trying. Looking really strong in this compression. Yeah, if you want to play a game at home, see if you can spot her brother in the audience as well. He has some very bright pink hair going on at the moment. And look at this from her in the zone. And feet to the right, which is crucial for this next section. Yeah, that all-important zone has been ticked. She's going to stand really high into this next hold so that she can get her weight. See her the hips were below um, where her hands were. So as she goes to this next hold, she wants to stand up tall. I think she's going to have to lose the left foot to get the weight onto the right foot, which means that she can get into the undercut. If she doesn't stand up tall, she's not going to get any weight through that hold. Jenya is in much better with the left foot positioning that time. She's trying to do a foot swap here. Yeah, that's the foot swap she needs. So she needs to be able to foot swap and then step up left toe now. She was looking to go low there. I hope we see her make an adjustment and change to going high. That left foot so nasty. She commits to it, yeah. stands up. The left foot and this next right foot are both blocked so that it's making the, forcing the athletes to be accurate and precise. Well, this is a big moment for Jenya here. She makes the top on the slab and she needed to. That is her preferred style and look at her. 25 seconds to go. Yeah, she's shaking her head there. I think she knows she could have done that a lot faster. It took her 10 attempts. So when I was saying earlier, you'll, we'll see athletes trying lots of different things and being quite quick with their attempts to try and figure out and feel what works. Sometimes you've just got to do that. If you can't mentally process what's going to work for you, you need to get on there and feel. She'll be frustrated that it took her 10 attempts. That's something she's very capable of, as we've clearly just seen. Um, but again, there's still one boulder to go. Yeah, and it's, uh, it was an important send for her, despite the attempts it took. And we see Kyra Condi on the main screen <laughs> running on. She was uh, vocal about how happy she was she'd be in this semi-final. Yeah, we've seen Kyra in some semi-finals this year, but also seen her lower down in the pack at some events. Um, she was really excited about climbing her. I went and said hi to her after qualification. She just couldn't stop talking about the boulders. It was a privilege to be around that energy. Um, and I know she'll be wanting to give it her absolute all out there on those mats today. So Kyra is underway on women's one. I'm Ori on women's two. It's the slap that falls. If we see I get through this powerful movement, I think we'll then see her using her heels and moving around. Kyra up on the zone on boulder one here. Yeah, she's got that toe locked in. Needs to work out how to hold the swing. Interestingly, up into chalk up. We've not seen many athletes chalking up on these boulders yet. It's going to be getting hotter out there. The light, the, you know, the room is going to be getting hotter. The holds are getting hotter as the climbers climb on them and keep holding onto them. Um, Kyra trying the fast method there. Similar to Jenya on her first attempt, twisting. Kyra on the mats there just acted out a little twist. So I think that's what she's probably going to try again. A <laughs> big smile <laughs> from Afra as she stuck that zone. She looked as surprised as everybody else. She just almost so casual there. Yeah, the audience kind of like pan into view when you get that move, but she falls on the paddle. She falls on the paddle, and that was because she didn't she didn't stab her right foot. You know, she she did the paddle dyno, hit the right hand, and then her body just kept rotating, not allowing her to make the most of that. I with a great heel hook on the left. Really impressive to make that stick. This is exactly what I thought we'd see from I. She's really great with her heels, high foot placement. Um, 
It's a powerful section coming, but she's got her weight above the lip here, which is what I was saying earlier. She needed her hips nice and high. Yeah, the first one to really make this move work, bumping Just the right. Left toe back step, which is going to be crucial, into the narrow compression like the set is expected. Oh. Top to come. Oh, we about to see her top first top. She needs to go maybe above it. There she does. Oh, a little swing and a catch. That's brilliant from Aymori. Great fighting there. You could see she was looking around. She didn't know exactly what to do. She is talking to the judge here. She gets the nod. She seems happy with that. But she was figuring it out on the wall. When you've done a powerful climb, you've got to the top section. It's still tricky. You don't want to have to go again. You're going to be trying to think fast, not tie yourself out, and also make sure that you get it right first time when you get up there. Oh, so good. So two out of two for Aymori. And Afra sticks the uh, coordination move again now into the paddle. Not really kicking with that foot, is she? She's not kicking with the foot. Um, and because of that, even if she tries to kick with the foot and misses it, it will stop her body rotating. So her body is rotating. She's coming off the jug. Suddenly the jug doesn't feel like a jug anymore. It gets worse and worse the more you rotate outwards. Um, I hope we see Afra kind of realize what she's doing wrong, make that change and get that foot up or at least keep her body more parallel to the wall next time. Yeah, that's what she has to do then. So we'll see if she makes those adjustments. Elnaz on the slab. Rapid firing straight back on. Yeah, well, we've seen so many attempts. I mean, we said earlier, Jenya took 10 on it. It's one of those boulders. Kyra as well, struggling a little bit at the moment. Catches the right hand, gets the toe in. This is where she's been falling, trying to twist into this right hand. See here, she's, she's got quite sucked into the twist method, so she's jumping up into the undercut and trying to go left foot up. If she can get that right foot up, it might help. Yeah, she will reset. She's chalking up. Afra's still going. 40 seconds to go. Missed the foot there, unfortunately, straight between the two blue, blue circles on the black volume. Elnaz, though, sticking this move for what I think is the first time. Really worth that rapid fire. Interestingly, going low, which is what Jenya looked to do. Oh, yeah, it's hard. She's got to really rotate around, holding on to not very much there. This is not the intended method, but she's making it work right now. If she's able to get that foot up, she's looking for a palm. I think she's going to retreat and opt to try and go foot. Only, unfortunately, five seconds on the clock. Yeah, she got into a bit of a trap there, climbing a bit too low. Elnaz will leave. And we reset about halfway through the semi-finals now. Natalia Grossman oh, on next. Only halfway through. Only. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an exciting round so far. It's looking like you're going to need a lot of tops for finals. Yeah, it's gone quickly, hasn't it? They did with the men's yesterday as well. I thought that, that competition just went in a blink. It's so exciting. Jenya on her last climb, Jesse on the powerful women's two, and Natalia Grossman on women's one. And for Natalia, a disappointing lead round by her standards. It didn't make semi-finals, so this is important for her. It really is an, an unexpected round in lead, but she can now focus on Boulder. And also, like we've said, all of these athletes, or most of these athletes, are looking to do the lead in Boulder at the end of the event, um, which is where the Olympic spots will be awarded. And Natalia came up looking like she means business here. She is competing in the lead in Boulder. She is looking for an Olympic spot. Um, so although she didn't have the round she wanted to in lead and won't compete in the lead semifinals, she, it does look likely that she'll be in the lead and boulder event that's coming up at the end yeah there's a lot of maths going around at the moment i was speaking to uh, tom about molly's chances and he was like i have no idea <laughs> it's like i just can't work it out at the she's moment she's in both semi-finals i think molly's looking looking very safe yeah i think he was uh standing on the fence didn't want to say too much <laughs> but it is um it is complicated to, to work out those points sometimes but yeah we're aiming for that boulder and lead at the end and also the athletes that are hoping to make it to the Olympics and looking to be on the Olympic qualification pathway, this event is all adding up points for the Olympic qualification series that will take place next year, where the top athletes will be invited to compete at that. It's, it's not a given whether you get to go or not. So, yeah, it's an important event regardless of whether you're making the next round. Jenya, really smooth through that first move there. 
Yeah, she is sitting down in eighth at the moment. Got a top on the slab. Needs a top here. Three minutes on the clock to do it. Yulia is figuring out the slab. You can see her practicing it on the mats there, the movements required. And Jesse launches into the slap. Bumps the hand up and gets a heel locked in. She's so good at that. And then Changing the heel to a toe, getting a bicycle, trying to make something work. She's in Just the right see body. how steep it is there, her, her ponytail hanging down. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. You can tell, bumps up with the right. That was really strong work from Jesse. Yeah, getting into that position was smart like that. And now we've seen Aymori do this. Can Jesse do it? Similar to I, her left foot is super high as well, which is going to make a big difference getting that hips up. She's just a little too short. Like she, she could have gone a little bit more. Um, kind of left her hips behind as she went into the movement. Really needs to stand up through the legs there. The hips being over the lip is what's crucial for that movement, but it's not over until you're kind of stood into the undercut. It's all through the legs to be able to make that undercut work. Right, so that's what she has to do. She brushes up two minutes, lots of time to do it. And Yulia, good work. She planned that out on the mats and executed it well. Yeah, interesting that she didn't rapid fire. She didn't have lots and lots of attempts. She was thinking and processing on the mat. Different style. She was obviously able to absorb a lot from her first attempts. Yeah, now she is pressing into that blue, pinching it. Fast learning. She's going to want to step her foot through. She's looking kind of second guessing here whether she needs to foot swap. Hopefully we see her step through. That kind of a move. It's You see athletes sometimes lift their own foot into that position. It's that last little bit of movement that's she's hard. She's just trying to make sure she's in balance. She's one of the taller climbers. Um, so as she's lifting her foot up, you see her kind of twisting and it's pushing her out from the wall a little bit, which is going to make it so hard to stay on. Makes it work this, doesn't quite make it work this time. I thought she had it there. She did get her foot to the foothold, um, but wasn't in a comfortable position. Yeah, close, but not quite for Yulia. And Jenya as well looks up to the sky. Well, the ceiling, <laughs> I should say. Yeah, this indoor venue here, and, and Sean was saying about it yesterday, it's really lovely because the, the top is, uh, it, the light affects the stadium. It's a see-through roof. So uh, it feels like an outdoor, indoor venue. It's lovely to be here. Jessie's so strong in this. Will she attempt this again? Because when I saw her put that toe in, it seemed like it took a lot of power out of her, that move. And you saw that on her next go. You know, she's packing up, she's leaving. Um, it took a lot. Jenya fighting to the end, as she should on, you know, it's her last boulder. Having some really great goes at this paddle, but not not getting that foot up, not kind of, maybe it's not allowing her to engage on that right arm. Yeah, so she goes again with 13 seconds, but she's going to have to be quick. Yulia as well. Yulia is done. Jenya has six seconds. She's going to have to be super quick. Not quite. Great to see her trying to the end, though, and really strong work from her. Super smooth on that sideways jump. Um, a shame we didn't get to see her stick the paddle, but some close attempts. And I'd say a good round for her. It's a long competition. It is indeed a long competition, and all the points count. Petra Klinger gets a massive reaction as she runs on. And it was so good to watch her climbing in quali. She had a good opening set of boulders there and fantastic to have her here in the semi-final. Yeah, I, I don't know the interview at the end of the qualification. If anyone's not seen that, Petra's emotion is is contagious. Her psych, her satisfaction. It was so, so beautiful to see. Um, I've, I've known Petra since the youth series. <laughs> Yeah, so um, going on two decades now. So yeah, to see her still fighting hard out there on the mats is, is really impressive. Yeah, and, and worth remembering with Petra as well. She's the ice climbing world champion currently. So multi-discipline athlete, so strong. Home crowd advantage, but also adding that pressure, you know, it's stepped up a gear in this arena and you can feel it, Petra can feel it, but she wants to put on a show. She's here to be trying hard. Fought really hard on that move there. Wasn't quite in the right body position, but it didn't matter. She was able to power through it. One hand on the finisher, stepping that right foot up and the left heel in, securing the match. <laughs> well, that might settle the nerves, start. I think. The, uh, the letters go up in the background, although they're trying to spell it. P's <laughs> in the wrong place, guys. Left, left. <laughs> 
<laughs> she didn't give them long enough. She was too quick. Well, look, as a dyslexic, that would be my worst job in the entire <laughs> world. It would be, it'd be carnage if I was in charge of those letters. Yeah, it's up in just a minute and a half there for Petra. I think that will help settle the nerves. We've not seen Petra in a final since 2019, so she's going to be looking for that spot, especially with the home, the home crowd behind her. She lived in Bern for eight years. Um, she knows the city. Really? Oh, look at I Morris stretch it. I mean, she is not the tallest, so that splits move is outrageous. It's almost a full box splits there. That is such impressive climbing. How impressive is she creeping out of that? She is crimping the edge of the volume. I knew it was possible. Yes, I. Come on. <laughs> you still got it, Shorty. You still got it. <laughs> I didn't think I got that, but I definitely does, and she's taking her time to chalk up here. We've seen her get the zone now. She's made that work. She needs to get the foot swap next. Little squeak there, so you can hear the no texture part of the hold squeaking around as she's adjusting her foot solid through the foot swap. We're going to see her step into the next foot hold, which is blocked, like we said earlier. So, really accurate requirement from her. Yeah, we've got mics behind the wall picking up all these sounds, all the squeaks, all the squeaks and bangs and bumps. Oh, and look at uh, Elnaz on women's four came down, but good attempt on the paddle. I am loving watching Aymari climb this set of boulders. She's been brilliant. She looked like she was trying to stand on the top of the volume there. She's currently standing on nothing with her right foot. She had a almost like a flagpole on that last volume in order to bring her foot up. So does it in a very different style, in her style, made it work. What a great climb from her. The Japanese <laughs> yes. coach looked quite confused, as does I right now, but... <laughs> That is an accurate representation of my own face in that moment. <laughs> I just couldn't work out what she was standing on. Really innovative climbing, really thoughtful. She knows her body, she knows her strengths and weaknesses so well. And there's a great display of what she's capable of. Absolutely. Oh, brilliant from Ayamori. So two athletes have climbed their boulders. We're sticking with Kyra Kondi and Elnaz in the background who got close to the paddle just now. Elna's casual on the first move, really dialed that in. She knows how to do that now. And put all her thought and all her attention into this paddle. So when we were talking about this earlier, I was talking about a big arc that we'll see through the foot. So what I think and what the root setters agreed is that you need to step up quite high onto the left foot. So we're almost going to see a C shape in the hips. Elnaz there was very direct, which meant she didn't get that much power through the, her left leg, which is the high foot. So if she can come to the left before jumping, so get that nice arc, we'll see her gain a lot more height, which is required to be able to get the paddle and hit the next hold. If not, we'll see her go super straight, so like almost a straight line. And sticking the paddle like that is going to be really hard because you don't have the momentum coming round. It'll be much harder to get the foot up. See, so she's very straight again, not getting the height she needs to make this paddle jump work. It's a very subtle thing to notice, but for sure we want to see a nice C shape in the hips on this. Often with a dyno, we want to say really direct. But this one's a kind of dino that we want to see a nice curve. It's a techie dino, hey. Well, that's what she needs to do. Have a look as you watch this for that as well. We're not going to see it, unfortunately. Seven seconds to go. Elnaz will leave. Well, that was good from her. She's currently in a finals position. Remember, we're looking for our top six, but a few athletes left to come. So expect that leaderboard to flick around and change. But I, Mori is definitely making a play. Yeah, good work from Elnaz. She got all of the zones. She had a flash on the first boulder. I'd say a great round from her. She is sitting in a finals position right now. I expect that will change. You know, we've got a lot of athletes still to come out, but anything can happen. Well, the lady who's just run out gets a big reaction. Oriane Berton. And if you uh, missed Prague, go back and watch Prague because she was pretty impressive during that competition. So she has for sure the pedigree and such an instinctive climber. And, and I talked to her and I said, look, do you plan these things out before you do it? She was like, ah, sometimes, not really. And you know, she's that kind of an athlete. Yeah, she, you can see her body working on the wall. You know, as some people, their eyes are flicking around. You can see her body making those subtle adjustments. Um, she really knows herself and her capabilities. You know, she hits holds incredibly accurately. Um, and it's also super, super strong. Just like Natalia, almost getting the zone on her first attempt on Boulder 2. That's a crucial zone to hit. It is. Well, this is Oriane. We were chatting about her. Let's see if she can do this. Right hand up, needs to make the match. Adjusting the feet. And Oriane's competition is off to a good start with a flash. We've seen a lot of people fighting up that one, but she looked in cruise mode. She's 
Not broken a sweat, walks off very casually. Yeah, she's great to watch, really expressionate. Natalia had an interesting right hand position, really high on that uh, black volume in a section where there was hardly any chalk. Yeah, I think it allowed her to get a bit more height. Um, but then when she hit the zone, it looked like her body wasn't in the right position to hold it. So she'll change that up a little bit this time. She's gone for a toe hook, changing that again now. Yeah, just that handle a bit lower to get the heel in. So she's she's gone left with the feet. We'll need to see her work her feet around to the right in order to make this next section work, which she'll be able to do because she's dropped back down. Smart climbing from Natalia. And she's into the zone and has a moment to chalk up as well. Watch Jesse on the slab as well on women's three. She overbalances. Natalia getting encouragement. Nearly dropped back down to the zone hole. But yeah, quite she, hold it. she did try to save it there. Um, as we saw, her hips kind of dipped as she hit the undercut. She needs to get a lot more height in order to make this next hold work. It is such a bad hold. You can't be underneath it. You need to be stood tall, undercutting um, to make the weight go through the feet in order to not topple backwards, which we've seen quite a few athletes do now. Um, it's a hard finish to a hard climb. Uh, the slab that we're seeing Jessie on, she's, she's opting for the kind of lots of attempts, lots of learning. Yeah, she keeps throwing herself at the boulder. She's got two minutes 20, so lots of time to figure out how for that sort of waving arm. I keep doing it in sympathy in my chair here currently. It's just not finding that balancing point yet. That's better though. Much better. You saw her left arm, a bit of tension through the wall in order to keep her in tight. Yeah, Jessie's sitting down in six. She's got a top and now two zones. Gets bumped up to eight. And keep an eye on Natalia as well. She's launching upwards. And that's the hole Jessie is going for. Palms into it. Shuffles that right leg up in order to stand on the left. And straight through with the foot. No problem for Jessie with that move. Stands up, and from here, we haven't seen too many people drop it, so can she keep it together? Minute and a half. Slight shake in the leg. She's working hard for this. Oh, she does fall. My curse. Apologies, Jessie. She'll have time for another go. The root set has told us it's not over until both hands are up there. It, it's a very strenuous position to be. She didn't struggle with the cross through with the foot, which we've seen many athletes struggle with that now, so hopefully if she can kind of make this first move work again. A little bobble there, I think she just needs to kind of reset herself and she knows she can do this. It's a hard place to be when you know it's possible, um, especially dropping the boulder that high and the clock's ticking down, the pressure's mounting. Yeah, it's a lot. and Oh, yeah, low percentage move as well. You know, she's doing the same similar kind of movements and it's just little body uh, tweaks. You can see the difference between the boulder that Natalia's on, boulder two, and boulder three. Jessie's having lots of attempts, Natalia's having to have big rests, such different styles. Yeah, big contrast, this wall uh, does lend itself to these different styles. Zero degrees at the left, 60 degrees on the right, so lots of opportunity. Natalia back on the zone and Jessie back up high too. The clock is counting down, so I think this will be their last attempts. All right, so Natalia has to give it everything and Jessie has to stay calm. And Natalia falls. She didn't take her left foot up, so she, her left foot was low. Jessie with a big arm pump. She gets that boulder down with 10 seconds to go. And that will do wonders for her score. There I'm it very is. Very happy with that. That was great to see her persevere. She composed herself, was able to kind of shake off the attempt where things didn't go right. Um, and yeah, stick with it and get that top. Impressive stuff. Well, look how deep Petra Klingler is breathing. And Flavi is waiting as well. Flavi having a fantastic season. Let's watch, uh, this is Yulia from earlier on. I think it might have been a top. I don't think we caught it on camera, let's see. So she eyed up the big move, hit the paddle, kicked the leg. Flash. There's a flash. Impre well, no that's why we, we didn't, didn't catch, catch it. it. She was <laughs> too quick for us. Oh, she had a high left heel as well. Makes the match. Oh, it was during Oriane's send, that's why. And let's see, Jessie, so she had the heel. This was a successful one, much more stable. <laughs> Delighted with that one. And Kyra is starting this process on the slab. So she tried to go slow there. I think we'll see her change that now. Um, really great first attempt though, feeling it out, figuring out what's going on. 
Okay, Petra needs to unleash some physicality here. Flavi's on her first boulder, and on four, I Mori is eyeing up the big jump, which is a long way for her. It is a really long way. It was great to see her flash the zone on that boulder, but I think the power required to do this next move, it'll be interesting to see if she can figure out a different way. Maybe, I don't know, if she can take two feet up onto the higher hold somehow, use both legs to jump through it. Um, she definitely came up short there. Yeah, it's only we saw her struggle a little bit with in Innsbruck. There was a, a reachy move at the beginning of one of the boulders and it took her a while to get the power sorted. Kyra is in, though. Really fast um, figuring it out for Kyra there. Yeah, good work from her. Chalks up. She knows it's important from here. Kyra's been working really hard on her slab climbing um, and it's, it's showing here. And uh, that shout was for Petra on boulder two. Locks the heel in now. Flavi as well is making progress. Petra drops out of our shot. It's all action here. Flavi's going to top out, so that's boulder one done. <laughs> We've now just got three to focus on. Great work from Flavi. Yeah, awesome from her. Oh, and Kyra saves it. Impressive save. Yeah. Making use of that right volume, really smart climbing from Kyra. Yeah, she's got so much knowledge, doesn't she? I mean, she... Yeah, she's, she's one of the more experienced athletes. It shows in her climbing, utilizing what she's got on the wall, opting to reach down, staying quite low with the hips. I know the... Uh, Big stand-up now that's required for her. Oh, just bobbles. Yeah, the TC facility in the US has a uh, no-hands section of slab they use specifically for training moves like this. Yeah, interesting. We used to do that. Um, so Leah and I had a no hands wall, um, and it's so important. I think it's definitely something that all athletes should be training. Yeah, well, Petra gets a cheer as she goes in. Kyra again, smooth through that first section. I wonder if she'll try and go high this time or if she'll reach low again. Petra fighting hard, looking at her skin. It's a very, very burly boulder. Boulder yeah. two. Yeah, I guess you have to make that decision of how long you're going to keep throwing yourself at it with the skin. Kyra slips and falls. Ah, struggling with that move to the left. and It looked like she, like she's struggling with the stand-up. So the, the leg strength required to stand up out of that deep, deep position. I wonder if we'll see her try to stand high before reaching across, which is what the root setters had, um, had planned to stand up before going left. Everyone's kind of getting sucked into the foothold as a handhold here. Um, there will be chalk on that, so I can see why she's doing the same thing again. Yeah, it's as she puts the weight on the foot, because it's so downturned, she keeps bobbling off it, and I misses the jump again on the right. Oh, Petra's that right hand skin. <laughs> yeah, she looks down at the right hand. Kyra misses it that time. She's been really consistent with getting that move. She has, yeah, it's, it's really impressive to see. Um, Kyra also has 10 vertebrae fused, which is not holding her back at all right now. She's overcome some incredible, incredible experiences to be here on these mats, and it's so impressive what she's able to do, and she does not let it hold her back in the slightest. Such an inspiration for many, many, many athletes. Yeah, she really is, and it's a good point and worth mentioning that. All right, look at I on the right as well. Has she figured something out? Kyra's in on the left. This is good work Stood from her. Stood up tall before going left. Didn't get sucked into that foothold as a hand. Needs to stay composed now. Has opted for the foot swap. We've only seen I match the hold off the left foot here. Um, she's not going to be able to compress, but hopefully she can get enough out of this hold for the match. She's coming back to chalk. Oh. The clock is ticking down. Come yeah, on, this Kyra. is it. She's in. And that is a good top from her with eight seconds to go. She had to get that done on that attempt. I feel like it's a journey with this lab. Every time an athlete comes, I'm getting exhausted watching them figure it out. It's, it's such a process. It is, and we're seeing athletes do it in a really personal style as well. It's a great boulder for showcasing kind of different styles of the athletes, being able to kind of work around and make it work for themselves. All right, well, Annie Sanders runs on. Uh, her name will come up as Anastasia. She prefers to be called Annie, because so that's why we're going to call her Annie. The second of, uh, sorry, the third of four US athletes in the semi final. Yeah, Team USA on fire at the moment. Josh Larson will be down somewhere at the front uh, doing his excellent coaching as always. And then Oriane is on this power boulder. Only I'm Ori sending it so far. 
Really precise with the right foot to stab into that crimp. There's action going on everywhere. My eyes are flicking. Jessie makes the paddle, holds it, so she's going to top out on the right, hopefully. Ariane falls. Jessie one move away. Annie looking smooth through this section. Jessie's in on the right, so she gets the boulder done. And Annie, Annie just hangs around on boulders like lead roots. She's got endurance for days. And Natalia on boulder three as well, making quick work of this slab. Stars are popping off all over the place here in this round. And he holds the twist. Holds the twist without the foot. Such incredible strength there. You can see her shoulders really high. She's having to put a lot of a lot of power through that to hold on. Hasn't bumped the foot under the volume just yet, but I think we'll see her do that now. Looking for a knee bar. Oh. I believe she's got a double, she's standing on her own leg to knee bar. Wow. What like, style. I hope we get to see that from another angle, and someone's definitely got a great picture of that. <laughs> I'll be honest, I did not see a double a knee bar stack there. Stack knee bar. <laughs> I, wow. love, I remember first seeing that move a couple of years ago and thinking, what, yeah, no one will ever do that. And it's becoming more and more common. Great creativity and maturity from such a young climber, you know, to be able to see that in the moment. I doubt she planned that from the floor, but yeah. Yeah, brilliant from Annie. Well, her teammate here, Natalia, is onto the final section. Remember, it's not done until this match, and now it is. Really fast attempt, only only two goes, taking taking her to the top there. Um, we haven't seen that on this boulder. It's taken athletes a long time to figure out. Yeah, good work, and look at Oriane as well. She has the left hand, the more powerful way, because she's got to then rotate her legs to the right. Palms Opting down. to drop down with the right hand. We've seen it work when Natalia dropped down with her left hand here, which allowed her to move her feet around. That's why we love Oriane. You can see exactly what she's going through. Yeah, when she uh, won her gold medal, I bumped into her just before the competition started. She was like, ah, oh, I'm exhausted. I'm not going to win this thing. It's just <laughs> going to be what it is. I don't really care. Then she went and won it. It was unreal. Like it's Often the way, you know, that expectation, it just floats away and she's allowed to just express herself. And this was Jessie. We caught it on the small screen. Such, such an impressive splash for Jessie here. It was great. Got that high. Left toe in. Two moves on this boulder, you know, it's it's not a lot of moves, but they are fine margins getting these right. It's really cool to see, you know, she's gone away, worked on her weaknesses, normally not a boulder you would expect Jessie to do super fast, but to walk away with a flash on that one, I'm sure she's going to be really happy with that. Yeah, and it's helped her score. She's in third position. Remember, we're looking for the top six, so Martina is on the bubble in sixth place. Natalia has a boulder to go, of course, but yeah, a high scoring round for the women. We've still got four athletes to go as well, so we do expect those results at the top end to change. It's going to be looking like you'll need minimum three boulders, three boulders, four zones, potentially three boulders quite quickly as well um, in order to make it through to tonight's final. So a lot of pressure for the athletes to come. Zili Avazu, Ayala Karem, Yanni Garnbrett and Brooke Rabatou still to enter the arena. Seems like the slab is going to be kind of the crucial. So getting the zone on women's two is going to be super important. And then the attempt on the slab is going to be crucial. So that's the story of our semi-final. Final taking place tonight. Men's semi-final final was yesterday. Go back and have a look at that broadcast. If you haven't seen it already, or highlights on The Daily Show on YouTube. That bicycle, right foot on the crimp, left foot in a toe. And running out of steam a little bit here from Oriam. You can see the frustration there, you know, shouting. She's she's feeling it. She wants to climb this boulder, but it's just yeah, proven. Doesn't like to be beaten, does she, by a boulder like this? You can, uh, you can see it in her face. Looking tired there, you know. It's it's so, so steep through that section that there's they're, they're going to be fatiguing on that. Luckily, the next climbs, you know, they don't need to be compressing. There's no big squeezes coming up. Um, so they could give it their all, but they don't know that. They don't know what climbs are coming next. Now, there is an appeal against Jesse on uh, M3. And I've been told the appeal has been upheld. So we might see Jesse's score change here. Just to let you know. Keep yeah, an eye so on, that. on Boulder 3, Jesse did it in 14 attempts, zone in 10. It'll be interesting to find out what that appeal is and whether that does affect the results. It'd be. 
Well, apparently, I think she's going to reclimb because there's going to be a gap created. So expect some of the athletes to uh, not come out onto the mats here, which means Jessie will get, I think it's a two minute standard to climb that boulder again. So Jessie, after that success on the jump, has to do the slab again. Smooth from Kyra there. She's clearly been working these, these swingy, comp-style dynamic movements. Just a little short on that jump there. I think she went quite direct in her movement. Hopefully she can get up and over that foot a bit more. Flavi on boulder two. Getting stuck into those big squeezy volumes. Well, this is Zelia Avazu, who is having a wonderful competition. Comes up from the youth circuit and doesn't seem to be intimidated by the atmosphere at the World Champs here. And a smooth, smooth start for her there. So, Petra looks up. She's on the last sequence of moves here. Quick work through the start on the slab. Yeah, just a minute 20 to send that. Creeps the fingers over. Petra mm. didn't get the zone on Boulder 2, so she's going to be looking for a top here to stay in the run-ins. So an important moment for Petra. Lavi resting, Kyra swinging. And Kyra in, so keep an eye on the top right as well. She's on the paddle jump. Petra's looking to make a foot swap here, but changed her mind and gone for the cross through with the foot, which will set her up really well for the final move. She can make the compression with the feet work. All right, big moment for Petra Klingler then. Top of right as well, Kyra topping out on boulder four. Flavi working hard on boulder two. Oh yeah, Kyra's done it. Oh, oh no. Falls. <laughs> oh, Petra. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Yeah, Petra was really low um, on that last section there. She didn't have her weight through her right foot. Her weight was in her hands quite a lot. She needed to stand up super tall, get the weight into the foot to allow the compression with the feet. Then she can take her hands off. Until her weight's going through her feet, she's not going to be able to take her hands off, right? So she needed to stand up, get her hips nice and high, and then her hips above her feet, really in a straight, nice straight line so she can squeeze with those feet, using her legs to really stay strong and allow her to take her hands off. Um, it looked like she was struggling to get her weight up, though, to really stand up nice and tall. Um, she's got a lot of time on the clock, though. It was really quick for her to get to that final position. I hope she gets through the start again so we can see her see her send the boulder. Yeah, absolutely. And we know that starting moves, though, can be a bit low to percentage, so Petra will now go again and flabby. <laughs> flabby just now was trying to almost miss the compression out and jump straight through to the zone. I did wonder if that would work. I think the zone hold's too bad. It looked like the, it's just so slopey. You need to have compression with your legs to be able to stay on. Yeah, it would be a, a big launch, wouldn't it? Well, Petra is up on the slab. We know how quickly she got this first move. Can she recreate that? Drops in and she can. So precise with that left foot. She's down in 14th at the moment. That's what she's standing on. Not a lovely hold. She's up in to reach across really low. Um, but has the leg strength to be able to stand up and we need to see that s very similar style of stand on the next move if she stays low again or she might try and stay quite tall on this move which she has done see her hips haven't dropped this time whereas last time they were really low hips are nice and high she needs to get her weight up and onto that foot though oh, she falls going up yeah she's see she's lay backing um, so she's really leaning her weight to the right and she's going to the last hold as if she's holding onto it what she needs to do is get into a position where she's totally in balance and then she can let go because the last hold isn't good enough for her to go really fast to. Okay. Well, she's got 30 seconds, so needs to figure this out right now. Flavi leads the mat, so we'll stick with Petra. She flicks her eyes towards the clock. And the crowd are alternating between clapping and just staring at the wall, holding their breaths here. Still with that layback style. Exactly, yeah. I, it's frustrating, you know, she was going to the last hold as if she could hold on to it. It's so unfortunate she wasn't able to kind of figure out that last body position, but still a great effort from her, and, you know, the crowd were loving it. Yeah, brilliant. Well, it's good to see Petra out. This was Kyra's top. We saw it on our small screen. Good to see it on big screen. She chalked up before the last move to make sure of it. 
Interestingly, he went left hand to the top there, crossed over. Yeah, it's fascinating, all the different foot movements. Everyone seems to be doing it slightly different. I think that last move is so secure, you can kind of do what you want there, but everyone's just doing their own their own way to make sure they, they really have it. You don't want to be dropping the last move, especially when it doesn't feel too bad. Yeah, specific styles. Arms folded for Oriane there. She checks out ball to three. She is good on a slab. She, I think she'll enjoy this. Natalia is starting her swing. First go for her. Really accurate with the foot placements, landing, knew exactly what she was doing. So solid through that movement. We saw her go left, get loads of power out of the leg to stand up. No trouble holding on. Yeah, from there, it's pretty much done, isn't it? Natalia with a flash on women's four. Great from her. So Annie is looking, and uh, no one's on Boulder 1 because uh, of this gap, I think, that needs to be created. So we're waiting for Jesse to come back onto this slab to reclimb it. That's what's going on with Jesse. I know these scores haven't been changed on your scoreboard, but that's what we're being told. I think that was the fastest foot swap I've ever seen from Ariane just there. <laughs> Need a stat on that. Stats <laughs> people, let us know. Ariane drops in. This is a really strong way to do this movement. Standing up before reaching across allowed her to not have to do that really hard stand up. Now getting into a great position. She, her hips are coming to the left and she's in that balanced position, able to reach up. She wasn't laid backing, all the weight was through her feet and she was able to get that match really casually. Yeah, awesome from Ariane. Has a smile on her face as she leaves. One of those. that was second attempt for Ariane. Crazy. Well, Annie Sanders is alone on the mats. And perhaps not her preferred style, this boulder, although I know she's working really hard at these powerful dynamic moves. Very similar round in some ways to men's semi-finals with very few tops, but a really important boulder too. Um, on the same section of wall, super steep climbing into a very kind of precarious finish. Yeah, and Annie oof, slides down that hold. Yeah, the finish is very precarious, isn't it? And you're right, the men's had to sort of almost wrap themselves around the corner of the wall. Natalia's flash of Boulder 4 has bumped her into first position, so she has three tops and four zones, as do the first four athletes currently. So I, it's going to be, I imagine, three tops minimum. Definitely four zones to be able to get into this final tonight is kind of ramping up the competition right now, so... It is, yeah. And the, uh, the lead wall as well is starting to take shape. I, I, I'm having a look. Every time I seem to come into the stadium, there's more volumes there's on the wall. A couple of holds, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. It's some of the most complicated series of volumes like I've ever seen on the wall. So that's to come if you're uh, excited for the lead competition. I do think they put a load of extra ones on just to confuse the athletes, though. Oh, that's obviously disappointing. Obviously, there's observation still to go. So it's a, it's a big secret what the, root, the lead routes will be. And I'm sure the route setters play with the athletes, putting a lot of wild things on the wall. And so we'll see what remains Oh, you've ruined tomorrow. my dream now, sure. I sorry. thought it was going to be the most incredible route I've ever seen. But yeah, that, that will come up later in the week. But um, we finish the boulder first. And you can see the angles on the wall here. It's so great to see that, you know, 65 degrees on these big rounded volumes with hardly anything. We saw Annie just sliding off them there. She needs to be squeezing super hard to keep the compression um, and then that will allow her to get her feet up. Um, the way this boulder starts, you start on an undercut, you reach up to a crimp, pop your toe hooks in and a bicycle if, if you prefer um, and then take a big cut. That cut is hard to hold on these super slopey volumes as we've seen Annie struggling with a little bit here. Um, She's bumped her hand right back, much better from her now, getting her foot onto the crimp and pulling so hard with the legs in order to make this compression work. Yeah, it's, uh, she's fitting it to her style nicely with that move, bringing that right foot up to match the hand. So Annie shakes out, yeah, just 15, remember. There's no hiding from the fact that this is an incredibly burly, powerful boulder. Though. You know, there's, there's feet available you can use heels but you still have to fight hard you have to squeeze there's no denying that um yeah there's no escaping it no it's just one of those isn't it well she does a similar kind of movement arching the back as she holds the swing matching hand to foot and holds the slap this time so one move further for annie Reaches. even with that heel it's still so powerful but great to see her in the zone 
clock yeah. ticking down. I think that's why we saw her just drop there. Um, it was a lot of climbing left to go. She would have needed to move her feet to the right, but still an important zone to take. Definitely. It hasn't been up though. Now it's been updated. So that, oh no, not yet. So Annie is, we'll wait for the confirmation of that zone. Well, hopefully an important zone to take. Yeah, it was, uh, and Ayala Karem runs on with the best chalk bag in the business. Bit of a lucky talisman, that one. And Ayala is going to enjoy these first couple of boulders. Flavi on the slab, and yes, Annie Sanders has been given the zone now. So our top six, Natalia Grossman, I Mori, Osh McKenzie, Jesse Piltz, Yulia Kruder, and Oriane Berton currently with a couple of climbers left to go. So much action in this round. It's been great watching. Root setters have really put on a show for us in all the rounds so far of this competition. It's been some good setting. And oh. Again, we're not going to ruin it, but go and look at the men's one. Some interesting setting there. The excitement on Petra's face there, she realized she'd unlocked that and knows she can do it. Before she even hit the mat, there was a smile on her face and she was ready to go again. <laughs> so Petra's on her last climb. Zelia Avazu, strong, but pops the right hand. Ooh, a slip there, but it looked like it could work for her. Ayala, as expected, cruising. Gets that one done. Ayala um, was the only person to top one of the boulders in qualifiers. So, yeah. Uh, we'll be expecting big things from her in this round. She's looking definitely on form and ready to fight. One of my favorite things about Ayala is I know that Alex Kazanov somewhere is going insane <laughs> <laughs> watching her. Also, when I say these climbers are ready to fight, I mean fight on the wall. I'm not saying they're up for a fight. Well, we don't know. We can't see backstage. <laughs> Maybe it's all go back there. I mean, who knows? All right, Jess, uh, Jesse Petra goes again. Oh, foot straight between those two blue holes on that volume. Her mind was on the next move there. She just needs to rein it in, focus on the climb and the move that's in front of her so she's able to give it her all on that paddle. Yeah, that smile, I think she knows. She's, it was just a mistake on that jump. She's still got it down. Flabby, we haven't seen too much on it. She's figuring out the slab. And then Zelia is preparing herself for the... F oh, Petra misses again. So, interestingly, on Petra's first go, her right foot hit the higher of the two blue holes in that volume. I haven't noticed any of the other athletes do that. So I don't know if she even knows that that's what she did. It doesn't look like she's aiming for that higher blue blue hole foothold. So it'll be interesting to see if she's a, tunes into her body's natural rhythm of what it wants to do or makes an adjustment so that she kind of makes the lower foot work. Um, but yeah, I was surprised she hit the higher foothold when she, when she stuck the move first try. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because, yeah, remembering your own sequences, especially in the heat of the moment, but she's better there, she's in. Yeah, it makes the lower foot work, it doesn't matter. And Flavi high on the slab here. She needs to get that compression with her feet. But yeah, pinching. Petra jumps the jump. Flavi one move away, but similar. It wasn't in a balanced position, so it's similar to Petra, but way further to the left. Um, she was almost there. She didn't quite feel it, didn't quite find it. I think her right foot does need to maybe pivot so she can get a bit more strength through her adductors, so making her legs work. Um, I think, yeah, you know, climbing's often a sport that people think of upper body strength. Um, this is a great demonstration of how much their lower body is having to work, both from the tips of their toes, you know, through their legs, through their, their adductors and their hips, everything is working to squeeze to be in that balanced position. Yeah, those legs working hard. Petra misses the blue volumes that time. If the root setters have put those two blue volumes on perfectly to create a little funnel for the foot to slide straight through them, which we've seen a number of times now. Yeah, the amount of thinking these setters put into this is incredible. Petra wild out to the wall. Yeah, they test everything. I mean, you were talking through different options. They were like, yeah, we tried that. It's not possible for that. You know, they're always thinking, and I don't think people look are aware of how much work the root setters put into these boulders. No, and if you ever want to know how hard they work, just ask to see your root setters' fingertips after setting around. They yeah. work so hard. Yeah, physical work from them. Right, well, Petra is still not getting this jump on the top right, and Zelia as well. She will leave with 46 seconds to go, which is probably wise. Save a bit. Got the zone, so she should be happy with that, but she doesn't know how important that is. Yeah, true. The score, there's no scoreboards visible here in the arena for the athletes, and of course they're not meant to know the scores. All right, Petra with the swing. Better right now. Let's see if she can get there. She's been dropping this move. Oh. Well, this is going to be a reaction from the crowd if she can get this final move and make the match. 
Wait for the cheer. She's fighting. Oh, she makes she's it work. Brilliant from Petra. And that is the reaction from the crowd. And Petra moves to the front of the stage. Oh, oh what an emotional moment. The crowd are going wild. Petra's in tears. She's so happy with that one. She fought for that. It made that boulder made her work. It made her think. And she deserved that top. What a fight. Well, that, I mean, there's rumors about, I mean, we've got lots of athletes, some of them leaving competitions. I mean, Petra Klinger is, you know, thinking about different things. There's such an emotional reaction coming off that boulder wall. I hope we get to see her climb again, but you, you don't know. Well, I'm, I'm almost certain we'll be seeing her climb in the lead and boulder at the end of the event. Yeah. Um, she's, she's looking for an Olympic spot, you know. Unfortunately, that wasn't enough to put her in a finals position currently. Um, but what a show. Yeah, brilliant. Well, Yanya Gambrett is on. In fact, she's on a one and two on your screens, but standing up, easy work from Yanya. And she's off. Off Done. back to ISO, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> they had enough time to get Yanya's sign. Yeah, just about. They had to work quick. And also Boulder 4, that's Oriane topping out quickly. Things are heating up here. They really are. We didn't say much about Yanya. There's... Yeah, who is she? There's a lot to say, but there's also not a lot to say. She needs no introduction. Yeah, the absolute goat. Exactly. Olympic champion. And she will be looking to return to the Olympics. The everything champion. The everything champion. <laughs> and also such a lovely person. She is. And I want to say, like, the amount of time Yanya spends with the fans as well is incredible. Uh, I mean, I've watched her spend 40 minutes plus after events signing autographs. She's always giving back to people. So it's, she's a real ambassador for the sport. Yeah, I've been hanging out with, with Anna and Petra and Brooke, actually, in the Adidas Terex Hub. And the amount of time Yanya spent with my daughter, actually, oh. has been so sweet. She said she loves having an easy name to say because all the little kids can say it really easily so yeah my daughter likes to cheer and shout go Yanya um, I almost recorded it because it's adorable um, but yeah it's it's really just so nice to see how much she cares about the sport and and the fans and all the athletes as well you know she's always kind of helping out bring bring the best out in the other athletes she, she wants a show she wants a good a good fight out there um, and she wanted hard boulders so Hopefully that's what she's got. Yeah, exactly. Can't she's wait to see her on Boulder too. Yes, oh yes, that's a really good point. Well, that's Replay coming. of Ariane here, her quick work and very casual hold of the paddle dyno there. Yeah, it looks easy, didn't it? She knew she had that in the bag. Yeah, and there's a big reaction from the crowd. Team France, very vocal for their athletes as well. That flash put Ariane into first place with three tops in four attempts. So very, very fast on the slab. Now, Jessie's score has now been adjusted. So, Boulder 3, that top has been taken away. She's just got the zone, and she will climb again. Now, Annie going back to the beginning, trying to readjust the feet a bit. So, I wonder if from the angle on the camera, or if we didn't quite spot whether Jessie maybe didn't hold the last holding control. It could have been something else. Often on the slab with a precarious finish like this, there are a lot of appeals on the match for zone. We saw that in the men's as well. I hope that Jessie will be able to compose herself and come out and execute this really well. It's a hard thing to do, especially in a high pressure environment when it means so much. Well, I'm being told she will be out at 11.53 to reclimb that slab. So in about 10 minutes time, Jessie will attempt it again. Annie doing everything <laughs> on this slab. It's brilliant to see. Yeah, we saw some of the earlier athletes taking a long time to figure it out, similar to Annie here, and then we've seen some quick ascents. It just shows how impressive it is for the athletes who are able to figure this out quickly. It's so hard with all the different options um, and figuring out what works for you, but Annie's making progress. She's making more and more progress to the left and looking like she might have figured out a way for her. Um, it's almost you can see the body language change. You can see the the energy they put into the try um, and the foot placements start to change. Uh, where her hips will be will change as well and she'll figure it out. Yeah, she had a, a shake of her head then that time. And frustration started to creep in there is again. Just can't work it out. Oh, she holds it, got a clever toe in underneath, straight back onto the wall. She's going to try that again, I think. Yeah, look. Into that little V created by the two volumes. Yeah, it's, 
it's hard to express how shallow this volume is that she's trying to stand on. It's really not a lot at all, and you can see the adjustment now that she's stopped trying to do that. It's, it's just not a lot there at all. Uh, well, she's trying everything. Hasn't really stopped yet. Running at this lab again and again. Sliding down. So when she's doing this fast method, she isn't looking at her foot, and she's missed the foot almost every time. Um, she almost went too fast there. Her hips didn't stop on the foot. Her foot was more accurate, but the times where she's been missing it a lot, um, there's not much you can do because your foot will then hit the no texture. That's all yellow is no texture. So it's just sliding straight out of there. Yeah, and that's not a zone for Annie. So that is a big moment for her competition. Yeah, currently down in 17th. So that won't bump her up, unfortunately. So Annie will leave, put that frustration behind her and go again for the final climb. And we've got our last athlete out, unless the rotation has changed. I don't think it has. Brooke Rabatou, there she is. Brooke, another Olympian, trying to get another ticket here at the World Champs. And also in Boulder this year, she's had a first, a third, a third, and a fourth. <laughs> so consistent, though. Her lowest place finish this year has been fourth. Oh. And she's been building up to this event. I know it's been a big focus for her. Um, can't wait to see what she puts out on the wall. Always a great climber to watch in style and her ability to focus and find the flow. She talks about that quite a lot and it's beautiful to watch. It is indeed. Well, Brooke is underway now. The last time we get to see women's one. Good footwork through. And Zelia Abazu under the slab and look at Flavi on the uh, bol on boulder four. She's one move away. Really strong from Brooke there, no hesitation. It was, as soon as she committed to the move, there was no hesitation. Took a little minute to figure out what to do, but didn't matter. She was had the strength, she had the power, she could figure it out and take her time. And then as soon as she was committed to the method, she was away. Yeah, and she's just looking, to, just, just making, making sure. sure. <laughs> she's like, I flashed it, it was one dry. Yeah. Well, Brooke done. Very calm, she's got that sort of serene look on her face, she's staying within her zone. Yeah, Flavi making quick work of Boulder 4 at the top of the screen as well. Get to see a replay right now. This is it, so held the twist, sets herself up for the top. And this sort of climb, I think, splits uh, the world of climbing as to whether people like it or not. This parkour, jumping around. Um, it's great to watch, in my opinion, you know, and a climb like this, it's been split in the field that some of them can nail it first try, like Flavi's doing right here. Such an impressive flash to be able to do this. And then you're seeing athletes take some time to figure it out, some doing it and then struggling to repeat the movements. So for me, this is showcasing climbing incredibly well. Yeah, this I, entire round. I completely agree with you. Right, Zelia Avazu starts to creep over, putting the weight on the left foot. We saw Ayala Karem on women's two, which I'm looking forward to watching her on that one. Her kind of a boulder, big swingy moves like that. Celia, oh, such flexibility. But that, bringing that right foot up is so much harder than she's making it look. It sure is, and you know, we've seen athletes struggle on that. Um, she's got the positioning in there. I was kind of holding my breath a little bit as she was on that move. Um, but she was really strong and really, Great work for her to get that compression on that volume with her feet, um, making her body positioning perfect to go for the match. Strong work here from Alia. Right, Ayala has almost trying to bring it. Is that knee in? No, not quite. It's just the angle of it. Ayala is fighting hard. You can really see how steep that section is, 65 degrees. It's hard to imagine. Um, like, the athletes coming and sitting down and taking a breath <laughs> just afterwards, needing that little break. Yeah, Ayala is one of those, another expressive athletes. You can just see the thoughts going on ahead. Breathing hard, eyes on the wall. Yet to find a zone on this, which we do think is going to be crucial if you're looking to progress to the finals. Obviously, the athletes don't know that. She's just taking a minute to recover. Yeah, I was looking at the scores then. Flavi didn't get the zone on that women's two. And I think she might be the only, is she the only one who didn't in the top five currently, top six? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's such an important boulder. Ayala needs to get it. 
Let's see what she can do here. She had a good rest, 50 seconds to go, holds the slap. Looking pretty tired there. This boulder's taken it out of them. Fortunately, that shouldn't matter too much on the, the later climbs. It's also looking really hot out there now. The holds do change a little throughout the round. It's kind of the nature of the game. Um, you can see there's a lot more chalk on them now, and it's going to be getting a lot hotter too. Yeah, indeed, those lights on the wall, as you say. And it is the hardest boulder of the set, and Ayala just shrugs to the audience, and no zone for her. That might be important later on. Currently only seen one top from I Murray, so, yeah, it's definitely going to be exciting watching the next couple of climbers on this to see if we see more tops. Even though it's not had many tops, it's become a really important boulder of the round, and we've seen athletes get in different places. There's no one stopper move, and there's also a lot of different ways to get through that middle section. Um, I'm excited to see both Brooke and Yanya on this. I think they'll make it work for themselves and hopefully we get to see more tops. Exactly. Well, two athletes to go on that boulder. Nearing the end of the semi-final here. Yanya is waiting in the wings. Runs on. The clock starts ticking down. And let's see what Yanya can do with this boulder. It's hugely physical. Flash the first climb. Let's see what she can do with this one. I spoke with Anya yesterday and she was saying how excited she was. She said she was a little nervous, um, which I think people might find quite interesting because, you know, she's the, she's so experienced. She's the most successful climber out there on the mats. Um, but yeah, still gets a little bit nervous. She does, and emotional. I mean, when she won, oh, just drops down, holds that slap. I mean, that's her power, isn't it? Easily up with the right foot. Wow, Easily up Yanya. with the right foot. Oh. Great work from her. This is impressive. Can she keep it together? Gets that drop knee in. Is she going to do the mini compression? She's just wiggling her foot there onto the onto the jib. It's just casual up there on that hold. Taking her time. But interestingly, you know, she's, she's being forced to figure it out. She's, it's not a given. She doesn't know exactly what to do. Opted for the double match on that undercut. Straight to the right part of that hold. Um, almost dropped the middle section and then took her time figuring out the end. But when you're as strong as Yanni Garnbra, it doesn't matter how hard it is, you can spend your time figuring it out. <laughs> I loved her expression when she was sort of swinging around at the top in celebration. <laughs> so good. It shows how much it still means to her. You, this Yanya has done so many competitions now, and she puts all of her passion and everything into every single boulder that she comes out on, every single route, you know, not to mention she's... Pretty handy on a lead wall too. Yeah, she's all right. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, she came back from injury at the beginning of the season as well. So she didn't have the best start to things in terms of preparation, but like really come on and now looking back to a normal self. Yeah, breaking a toe a few months before the season starts is so unfortunate. Um, it doesn't seem to have slowed her down in the slightest. Um, not the ideal preparation, but it didn't seem to matter. No, exactly. That's how champions are born. I mean, Yourself, Sean, you had to battle back through injuries. I mean, I think it's what makes an athlete as good as yourself and Yanya, you know, that ability to uh, to deal with adversity. Yeah, I have my fair share of comebacks. <laughs> <laughs> so, Annie is sitting in 18th place. She's not going to progress, but would like to finish here on a high. Struggle with the slab, got a bit frustrated with it. Standing underneath this climb, and looking at how far that first dynamic movement sideways is, it's so far. It almost doesn't look like it on screen. And then the paddle move, I was a little concerned. I'm not going to lie. I thought the root setters had overcooked it potentially, but we've seen flashes on this climb. We've seen people getting really incredibly close and then making it work, some not making it work. It's actually been a great showcase in dynamic, new school climbing ability. Um, and we've seen athletes of all generations working their way through it. Yeah, and to me, it doesn't feel like too parkour, you know? It, it, feels like, it still feels like climbing and, and it's been exciting. Let's see if Annie can do this jump. Secure in the zone and setting up for this paddle. Wants to get all of her weight onto her left leg to be able to power through this. She does that. Looked like she hit the right hand wrong potentially there. Maybe her body wasn't in quite the right place. Right, well, Jesse Piltz is back on slab two. So she wasn't, she was, uh, there was an appeal. She lost the appeal for the top. She had two minutes on the clock to do this boulder. She knows what she's doing, but psychologically, this is hard. Really, really difficult. Also on a climb like this that is so precise and there's fine margins for a lot of the climbers. 
Well, right hand in, she will really make sure of this. I think she'll hold it for quite a while, and she does, yes. Point proven, Jesse. Shaking her head. She had a point to prove there. Yeah. She came out and did what she needed to do, showing her experience. It does, yeah. Well, she held it for a while. She'll be given that, and we'll wait for her scores to be updated. She's in seventh at the moment because she was dropped down, but I'll bump her back up into the top six, which will knock Yulia Kruder out of the top six. Jesse also having the zone on boulder two. Um, it's potentially looking like you're going to need three boulders, four zones, or, or at least three boulders and four zones. And then also those boulders need to be done in a few attempts, so that attempt from Jesse could, could cost her. We'll wait and see. And remember, these revolts are provisional. Annie should top this out from here. Brings the right foot up with 11 seconds to go. She nails it. So she finishes off her boulder season. So boulder session on a high. All right, well, the brushes prepare the boulders for the athletes. Boulder one, we've said goodbye to. We won't be seeing that again. And Brooke is waiting, being held in the wings. She can see the audience through that gap in the curtain and now is revealed as she runs onto the stage. Zelia Avazu on the last boulder and an Ayala Karem on the slab. Media teams working hard. You'll see lots of cameras, lots of attention on the athletes this week. Yeah, it's, a, it's such a big event, you know, the, not just for the athletes, for the crowd, for the world of climbing. The hype building into this event has been unreal. The city have really got behind it too. Yeah, I've been hyping it since about April. I don't, <laughs> I don't ever want to say the word world championships ever again. <laughs> right. Well, we've got a long way to go. It's not over yet. That's true. It's a good point, actually, Shorty, yeah. All right, so Brooke matches the zone hold. Brings her left hand down, an important... An important move there, so she was able to move her right foot really easily to the right. Yeah, well, she's got the zone, and we know how important that is. Can she get the third top of the competition on this boulder? Left foot came up, so she was able to get nice and high into that undercut. Be interesting to see if she's able to make this compression work or if she opts for the double undercut like Yanya. She's having a look on top of it, hits the flat spot. She pressed into that hold, reached up to the zone, very casual, looking stronger than ever ever I might say really is I mean you talk about levels to this you know, everyone has struggled on that apart from Imori you know Natalia Grossman and Yanya and they just look like different climbers even with Imori you know she was spending time figuring it out Brooke was and Yanya you know Yanya up there she spent some time working out her own beta Brooke was super quick through that really decisive um yeah, great work from her. Yeah, some athletes can make boulders look different <laughs> it's like a completely different thing Ayala spins back to the mats. 3.05 on the clock, and Zelia is trying to figure out Boulder 4. Little lean back there for on the, on the slab. Who've got on the slab? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's leaning back with her shoulders there. Right, Zelia launches upwards, hits the paddle. Good work from her. Eyes up the zone hold. Should get it from here, and this is going to bump her up into sixth. Oh, happy with that. Yeah, so let's wait, but that is a big moment as well. Yeah, and again, she's got the zone on boulder two, so it is coming down to those attempts. Wow, and it's going to be close here. An exciting finish. There's a whole other level of crowd I didn't notice there with that shot. There's three tiers of crowd here. Ayala with a big gasp as she nearly hits the hold. Great short bag. It's awesome, isn't it? <laughs> then she wears that all the time as well. Her foot placements are really accurate, so if we can see her get her body still when she lands her feet placements it'll be much better for her that that was loads better you know she was shoulders in hips in quick foot swap yeah and a little kicker with the left foot to steady herself now. yeah just to stabilize remember she missed that zone on two though so this is important in terms of attempts she's had nine so far squeaking away on the <laughs> no texture the panels that are just behind the footholds, making the athletes, forcing them to be precise. 
brings the right leg through easily. Strong work from her being able to stand up nice and tall on her feet. And you see that again. Loads of, loads of tension going through her left foot <laughs> in the heel, and she's happy with that one. She really is. Yeah, Team Israel have had such a, a surge in recent years. It used to just be Alex Kazanov, and then we've got <laughs> so many athletes coming up and through. It's good to see, and they're, they're a fun team, team to hang out with. They're, they're good guys. Right, well, we have a little pause now. After a, a very hectic semi-final, it's, it's yeah, gone quickly. Yeah, I think the first time the wall's been empty yeah. so far. So, yeah, a lot of action, um, some surprises, both successful and unsuccessful, but a really great round to see lots of different styles of climbing, great boulders for the climbers to figure out their own way on them, seeing athletes be forced to take lots of attempts and others flash what boulders that you would not expect they were flashable. I don't think we've seen a flash of the slab as far as I'm aware. Um, we've seen a couple of second attempts. I'm just looking back through. Um, but yeah, I yeah. think a lot of athletes will walk away happy with this. And they'll, if not, they'll definitely feel like they've done a lot of climbing. Yes, absolutely that. I mean, look how many tops we're seeing here. Jesse Pilts, that top on the repeat of the slab has put her back into the finals, but only just she's in sixth position at the moment. And as we pan down our list, you can see the ones who haven't made it, but Yanni Gambra still with boulders to go. Same with Ayala Karem and Brooke Rabatou. All right, well, the crowd cheer. We heard the buzzers there in the background. That signals the end of that round. The rotation period is done, and Yanya is on the far left. She's out on the mats on her own right now, but that's not a place that she's unfamiliar with. Yeah, she's pretty used to that, isn't she? But a little slip there, but she saved it by stepping back. Yanya loves hard boulders. She wants to be challenged. It's great to see her hesitant, actually. She's not... She looked like she didn't know what to do, decided when she was on the wall. She, I was going to say she's not decided what she's going to do. You could see that she thought about stepping, her foot slipped, she was going back and forth. Um, what, she's incredible at many things. One of those things is being able to commit to a movement, give everything in that go, and doesn't often need many attempts to learn. Yeah, instinct, isn't it? She's just got that climber's brain. Oh, she's pinching the top of the blue volume, gets the heel in. This could be the first she's flash actually, of this. She's got a toe, so she's clawing with her ah. toe, not her heel. She did put the heel in and then adjusted that to a toe. Not that it mattered. She had so much weight going through her foot. Massive confidence in her in her shoes, in her footwork. Um, and that broken toe definitely not slowing her down anymore. No, I don't think it's an issue. She seemed almost disappointed to get that done so quickly there. Sort of had a, a moment of shrug at the audience. Like, I'd love to show you more, but I got it done too fast. See, I'm saying Yanya likes hard boulders. And it doesn't look like these are hard for her, but they have been really difficult round. Um, lots of tops, but a lot of fighting and a lot of effort going into the, getting those tops. It's that none of them have been given. I mean, you you went through your period of being so dominant within climbing, and Yanya's obviously experienced yeah, that as well. Yeah, and then Yanya came. Yes, <laughs> it's slightly annoying, isn't it? It came out of nowhere. But what's it like when, you, when you're at that top spot and, and, you know, all eyes are upon you and, and, and the pressure is there? You know, how do you maintain it psychologically as well to, to, to be the very best and everyone expecting you to do well? It definitely changes things, and I, I can't speak for Yanya. I mean, she is in a league of her own. Um, arguably the most successful athlete in any sport ever if you look at the stats mm -hmm. um but for me personally i stood on top of the world cup podium a number of times and was so grateful to have had that experience but you know winning once is is the easy bit it's really really hard to do but winning once is the easy bit staying up there is the hard bit um and to see what yanya's done in her own climbing but also what she's done for the sport as well it's absolutely magical um, she is a privilege to watch on the wall um, I know you asked about my own climbing I brought it back to Yanya no, but it's who, who doesn't you know like she's she's just amazing I am so honored that I got to compete alongside her for a number of years um, managed to hold her back for a couple of comps you know stood on top of the podium ahead <laughs> of her a few times but it didn't take long for her to her dominance to start and yeah, it was just such a privilege to compete alongside her. Yeah, well, the, the reason I'm asking is I'm having so many questions come in talking about like how lovely it is to hear your experiences because, you know, you are one of 
the most well-known climbers in the world and you've done this so many times and I think people are really appreciating your insights so thank you for that. It's interesting you know so many people have said does it make you want to get back to competing and I was like no 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 um, and I think maybe we were watching the guys yesterday so it felt so far removed and now sitting here watching the women's I'm like oh, I want to try those borders like I do I really miss it I'm not coming back just so Would everybody anything knows. tempt you back oh I don't know <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what would um and it's so lovely seeing these girls and we travel on the circuit together we spend so much time together yes we're competing but ultimately it's the athlete on the wall you don't have control over the other athletes um it's not a race like it is in speed so you're not head to head with another athlete mm -hmm. at any point. It's what you put out on the wall and what you showcase and what you deliver is all that's within your control. Sure. And, and of course, you'll be commentating with me for the speed later on. And it's, it's quite nice to have you do that because obviously you've practiced speed because you had to do the combined. Exactly. So you really know what you're talking about. Yeah. Doing the combined event in Tokyo, we had to do boulder, lead and speed, um, which was very new for most of the athletes um, that weren't speed specialists and also new for the speed specialists to take on the two um, two sports of lead and boulder. Um, it made it really, really interesting. And in all honesty, actually, I think speed was my favorite to train for Tokyo because it was so new and really different, just totally different the way you train speed. And um, we can definitely talk more about that later. I know we're focusing on bouldering now. But I think it was a great tool for training as well. There's a lot of training for speed that was useful for boulder and vice versa. So, yeah, definitely need a lot of pounce <laughs> and a lot of feistiness in speed climbing. Something that I had to work really hard on, actually. Something for me, climbing, I always want to climb nicely. I always want to climb smoothly. And I had to really work hard to let that go for speed climbing. Um, but these two athletes out on the stage, both are really, both of them climb really smoothly and really nicely. I'm sure are both incredibly fast on the speed wall too. I know Brooke <laughs> definitely is. <laughs> well, that's all to come later on in the week. And the speed wall, if people notice, haven't got the red holds on yet because that will be used as part of the para comp, which is also taking place next week. Can't wait to see those athletes coming through. So Ayala Karem is finishing off her competition. She's got two tops so far. Missed a vital zone, though, on Boulder 2. And then Brooke Rabatou is on the slab. Yeah, Ayala, unfortunately, cannot make finals now. She did, did need all um, four zones. So even if she tops this, she can't make finals. But she'll be wanting to finish on a high. She doesn't know that she's not made finals. So still right to the very end of the round it's important to keep fighting keep working hard which is why you often see athletes getting on with very little time left to go um she's just missing the the footholds here not quite getting the movement i was talking earlier about kind of going up and over a fence with your hips to land on those holds we're seeing her go very very like horizontal um maybe she'll make an adjustment um it looks like she is here, so she's getting a bigger swing, higher with the hips, and then landing now. That was much better. Needs to get a little bit further to the right in order to get the weight in the right place to land. Okay, well, that's her task. Brooke Rabatou, for the first time, hits this move. Really delicate climbing from Brooke there on the foot. Yeah, Footwork. Ev everything can change still. We've got six athletes, but of course, Yanya Gambra and Brooke Rabatou so far outside, so things can still change here. Brooke making good work now she's got on this. She looks like she's opting to go for a similar method to I, dropping down low and trying to trying to turn this volume. Yeah, that left foot's on nothing and she does slide down it. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I, I do believe if she were to stand up, she'd make light work of stepping across to the left. Um, it will feel insecure though. All right, well, Ayla hits the jump for the first time. Two minutes 43, she's eyeing this up. It's a long way, it's a full body length, really, jump. Really Easy. pausing before the setup, just making sure she had the full focus going into that paddle dyno. Big, yeah. big scream as she hit it too, and two hands on the top hole to get the top. Brilliant from her, and she breathes for a moment up there. She's got a nasty scrape on her leg as well, you just saw there, so putting her body through everything to get these boulders done. Three tops for her. Brooke's so low on that. 
she's really getting sucked into that low like that low method i think there's so much chalk on the left volume now whereas at the start of the round it wasn't there because athletes weren't holding it yeah it's a really good point we talked about this boulder being a bit confusing because of the amount of rubber and chalk on it and yeah. maybe we're seeing that the athletes who've done this the most smoothly have stayed high through this so step their left foot across and then stood up tall and haven't put their hand anywhere near the bottom bottom half of this left volume um i i believe brooke can make this work well look she's got that right foot on that is brilliant from brooke rabatu not the easiest method but it doesn't seem to be slowing her down too much now it's a shame she took a few attempts to figure that out but she does have that top of boulder too great to see a buzzer be uh, sorry a beta breaker here but that left foot's not on anything pal brings the right foot yeah Come healing on, We'll spend time finding the balance position. Just udges her right foot slightly. Udge, there you go, I'm using it again. It's a brilliant word, I love it. <laughs> well, that's the top. What a sequence from Brooke Rabatou. Shows it's possible. And yeah. brilliant that the setters have managed to create a boulder that has, even at the very end of the competition, different ways of climbing it to keep us all interested. It's brilliant. Yeah. A great way to put it, it's interesting. They are figuring out their own methods and adjustment with Brooke's heel. It's really, really fine adjustment. I called it an udge. People have been asking about that. It's just like a slight little <laughs> movement. Um, not quite enough for like a move, just like a little minor adjustment um, in the heel to allow her to clamp between those two volumes, get in that balance position and be super solid on that last last hold. Well, we're watching now Ayala Karem. We quarter in live we're watching the replay now Got great that. to see an execution of that paddle after taking some time to compose herself yeah it was it was could clever almost, from her because she really paused for a long time to eye it up could almost be mistaken for nerves but i think it was just composure mm. and then that method from brooks so cool to see it makes the top you see her move her foot there that the heel i was talking about just very, very, very subtle. Makes all the difference for putting her in a balanced position to make that move work. Udging it over. A little udge with the heel. <laughs> <laughs> How do you spell udge? Is it you? Uh, I've got no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't believe it's a word. Oh, it, it's it in, is now. It's, it it's is in now. the dictionary. <laughs> right, Yanya Garnbrek comes on to her last climb on women's four. She's uh, sent everything pretty quickly so far. Be interesting I thought she to was walking this. straight past for a second there. <laughs> And looking at the end of the boulder shows her confidence immediately eyeing that up. Three flashes so far. She's got a big shoulder scrape. That came from the lead. I watched her walk up. I'm not sure when she did it, but she was pushing her shoulder into something at some point. That starts this swing. Easy first True move. True Yanya style. It's so fluid, that. And that's well, it. <laughs> that's it. I mean... It, it's hard to know what to say sometimes with Yanya, and I do feel for the setters occasionally because as, as incredible as it is to watch this, I don't know how you do it as a setter. Four flashes. What is there to say? Yeah. Yanya's climbing speaks for itself. She is absolutely dominating this competition, as you would expect, but you know anything can happen. Um, maybe not, actually, with Yanya. I don't think anything can happen. No, I mean... It, this is a funny question, but is it ever, when you were competing with Yanni, was it ever frustrating or were you just in admiration for how good she was? Because I've had some athletes being like, you know, however hard they train, I'm not sure I'll ever get to that Yanni level. And, and as an outsider looking in, I think I would get frustrated with that. Or did you see it as a challenge? It's funny. I, I saw it as a privilege to, to compete alongside her in all honesty. And maybe, yeah, I never thought of it as frustrating. Um, she's making all of the athletes better she's making all of the athletes work harder to kind of keep up with her and keep pushing her you know she slips up she makes mistakes she's been beaten mm -hmm. it's not the case that she wins every single round yes admittedly most um but for sure she's changing the game she's making the sport a better sport um so no i never found it frustrating i was absolutely privileged and honored to just compete alongside her as I was all the other athletes um, yeah it's it's really cool and I can't wait to see what she does next and how long she keeps going for and what what's coming because 
Yeah, she's she's done everything and she's still super motivated. You know, she's coming for Paris. She's talked about it. She's here. She's here to win. Um, she doesn't shy away from that, as she shouldn't. Um, but other athletes are coming for her. They are, and that is one of them who is. I, Mori, looking strong in bold. We know how good she is in lead as well. She's one of those who has beaten Yanya. I mean, last year in Yanya's home World Cup, she beat her. So, uh, as you said, and it's nice that Yanya sometimes is beaten, can be beaten, because you see this fire in her eyes sometimes. Yeah. She was angry after Copper last year. Yes, it's the last time I beat Yanya was in the combined qualification. Okay. I qualified in first for finals, and she was so jokingly grumpy at me, yeah. but I was like, mm, you're not joking. There's a little bit of honesty here. We're great friends. Um, There's a fire. It spurs her on. Like yeah. she, she needs it sometimes, I think, as well. I was, you know, you want a I challenge. I mean, it worked. She absolutely dominated everyone <laughs> in finals, as she should have done. You know, like that gold medal was hers. It had her name on it. Um, but, you know, as well at the Olympics, we saw her have to really try. Yeah. A little mistakes um, that she made in lead almost cost her quite drastically. Uh, refocusing. She's She is human. Yeah, absolutely. Believe it or not, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> and it means a lot to her. And you said earlier, you know, people are surprised when she gets nervous, but she, she does. And when she wins, she's sometimes genuinely, you know, surprised and, and shocked by it. It's, it's the reaction. It's and you real. you see the passion. You see what it means to her. Yanya's not good by mistake. Yes, she's incredibly talented. She's incredibly gifted. But she works so hard. Almost calling her talented is an insult because she trains so, so, so hard. Harder than anybody else out there she's not just walking into this because she kind of fancies a go you know her and her coach they put the time in and she deserves every single moment of success that she gets absolutely well this little pause period here because of Yanya's flash 42 seconds to go before Brooke Rabatou comes on and that is our I arena. will say though Yanya is probably the clumsiest person I know off the wall really yeah that's amazing in what? ISO, you would hear like a clatter and turn around and it'd be Yanya, like something would be flying up in the air <laughs> and she'd just be beaming, smile on her face. She'd walk towards the warm-up wall, trip up, like just joking around so happy, pulls on the wall and is the definition of grace. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to know she's got that aside to her. Yeah, she's, she's great. Uh, Nina Caprez there on your main screen. Uh, very, very talented rock climber as well. Good to see her emceeing this event. And a fellow mum. And Nina, a fellow mum, yes, of course. Our babies are the same age. <laughs> yeah, check out Shauna's Instagram for Frankie brushing holds and uh, tottering around on the boulder mat. So cute this morning when we were reading <laughs> those boulders. Right, well, Brooke is being held. Three seconds to go. Let's see what Brooke can do with this boulder. So the focus in her eyes there. Yeah, and this is something, uh, this kind of a movement wasn't her strength. She went away in the off-season and really worked hard at this, came back in Hachiochi and had some dynamic boulders like this, and the smile on her face when she got it was brilliant to mm -hmm. see because you could see the training paying off. Yeah, another athlete who, well, all of these athletes work incredibly hard. Brooke's also um, been studying, but t like finished now, so she's focusing fully on this process to get to the Games. An Olympian already. But yeah. she needs this to get to finals. Yeah, this is important. Well, she's into the first move. Let's see if she can hit this paddle up with two hands. Hits it just fingertips holding on. One move away, and I think this is going to be a flash for Brooke Rabatou. Should get it from here. And she does, and that's four out of four for Brooke. And like that, that's it. So we will <laughs> wait for the scores to be confirmed. Do bear in mind, these are provisional scores. There can be appeals after the competition ends. So Big we'll smile there for Brooke. That was a great flash just to come back to the climbing. But it's almost hard to imagine how hard that is. You know, at the end of the show, we're seeing these athletes smash through it really quickly. But there are other athletes who haven't been able to make it work, who have struggled, who've really found it difficult and shown how difficult, it, how hard it really is. Well, let's look at our results. Yanya Gambrett leading the way on the top spot. Four flashes, incredible from her. Brooke Rabatou up next. Oriane Berton, Natalia Grossman, Aymori, and Celia Avazu in a final here at the World Champs. Those are our finals.
exciting list, and that is an exciting list. Yeah, great work from Team USA and Team France getting two athletes in. Of course, Jan Yagambrot from Slovenia and I'm Ari from Japan. It's a great set of athletes, and Osh just missing it. I think she'll be happy with seventh, but it's a bittersweet. It's a hard, hard place to end. Um, Jesse really making that slab climb count, have been brought back out and getting into the top ten. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. What a round. What a round indeed. Ayala Karem down in 10th. Julia Kruder had a good comp. She finishes in 11th. Petra Kling, a massive reaction from her home crowd. Two USA athletes together, Annie Sizers and Kara Condi. And moving down, Molly Thompson-Smith. Good fight from her. She'll be pleased with that result, especially with that injury. And Elnaz, what a competition from her. And then Jen yet down to on the bottom spots. Great to see all of the athletes getting the top. I think the boulders were perfect in all honesty if you look at the results um Yanya you getting four flashes i wonder if the set has expected that i'd love to know um but i do think it was a great round i'm can't wait to see what they have in store for finals they seem to be stepping it up and stepping it up every round the setters such a, a great team and not long to wait until we see what they are. Exactly. Well, myself and Shauna will be back this evening for the finals. We'll look forward to seeing you there. Have a good afternoon if you're watching, everyone, and we will see you very soon.